Good evening. Um, we are assembled this evening uh, for this solemn occasion to remember Professor Tanu Padmanabhan, uh, also affectionately known to us as Taddy, who passed away last week, last Friday, um, here in Pune. We are deeply, deeply bereaved by his very untimely and unexpected passing away. Um, Paddy um, was a prolific researcher and um, he had devoted his career to understanding the nature of gravity. And of course, in doing so, he had a lot to say and think about many, many other issues in physics, in science and related subjects. Um, he had over 300 peer reviewed articles in um, cosmology, quantum gravity, classical gravity and many, many other branches of science and is one of the most cited authors um, in the physical sciences in India. He wrote some really highly origin, original textbooks on astrophysics, which are used worldwide, um, and several other publications on popular science and history of science, which are also very widely read. Paddy had joined the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research as a fellow faculty member in 1980, and he moved to Ayuka in 1992. I met him um, in between these two limits at some point, uh, I think first in 1986. Um, he stayed at Ayuka till um, he very untimely passed away last week. This evening, we are here to celebrate his life, his work, and his contribution to our lives. Um, we uh, would like to start with Professor Jant Narlika who was his mentor from the very beginning of his academic life. Here in a message we recorded earlier, he is accompanied by Professor Mangala Narlika. Tanu Padmanabhan, or Paddy in brief, was one of my Sounds students. Good. It would be no, not a difficult situation where you are asked to identify your most brilliant student. In my case, the answer would be Paddy. I knew him as a research student from Tata Institute of Fundamental Research when I was there and he was recruited for the graduate school. Uh, it seems that he set up a condition to the interviewers. Normally it is the other way around. Interviewers ask the, the student to do this or that. So, but he set up this uh, requirement. He said that he will join the graduate school only if he was allowed to work with me. So this was not a uh, normal thing as you know but the then chairman or chairman of the committee or director of TIFR Srikantan he took he was so impressed by the students replies that he finally decided to agree to his terms that means let him uh, come and work at Tata Institute, we will make sure Professor Narlikar will take him as a student. So at that time I was not present in the meeting because I was abroad. But I was informed of this situation and uh, I, I, although I had seen Padmanabhan in action in a in conference, I was able to form some opinion and I felt that it was a fairly safe decision to have agreed to his terms and I was certainly happy to be his supervisor. That of course the relationship started student-teacher but later it became colleagues and he has always been of the kind where one justifies the Sanskrit word, the words Shishya Dichet Parajayam 
you expect to be uh, beaten by your uh, your student so he qualified for that so far as i was concerned when tata institute of uh, was uh, going on very well for me and he for him i decided to accept an invitation to set up a new center in uh, pune and the uh, requirement was that i needed a very very good faculty uh, along with various other qualified uh, people and one of them was paddy in fact paddy wanted to come earlier but uh, i told him i will call you when you are more set up an academic program which will help uh, good students and uh, visitors this was guaranteed i i felt when this was given to paddy he was the dean of these programs and i am quite happy that he was available to uh, ayuka uh, even after i retired it was a very pleasant the situation <clears throat> to be in and i have i would have recorded my a sincere thanks to paddy for having contributed so much to ayuka thank you very much it is clear that paddy was a very brilliant scientist uh, astrophysicist but we also shared love of mathematics he liked solving mathematical puzzles and we used to exchange mathematical puzzles quite often so that was a nice thing to have so if he gave me a puzzle and in a couple of days i could solve it of course i felt very happy vasanti paddy and their daughter hamsa all three of them are very bright persons always rationally thinking i remember when hamsa was in school she uh, corrected a book i had written for school children and she pointed out the mistakes there is one more quality that paddy had uh, which is quite different from his academic achievements i just want to mention it he was originally a tamilian he was a born tamilian but he grew up in trivandra and he had a perfect loyalty to malayali language he considered himself malayali first and tamil later i admired that so he was very obviously a bridge of friendship a bridge of solidarity between the two states tamil nadu and kerala he was very proud of the kerala traditions also and later when he worked in mumbai for many years in tifr and then in pune he also became a bridge of friend, uh, friendship between maharashtra and these two southern states so this is probably achieved by him inadvertently but i wanted to mention it as a nice thing in today's age when we want to achieve more national integration thank you
Dr. Padmanabhan is probably the most creative and energetic scientist in India at the interface of physics and astrophysics. He has also been prodigious. My colleagues and I have been deeply impressed by the book on structure formation he wrote several years ago. Experts ranked it above the then reigning orthodoxy, the book by Jim Peebles. And as most of you know, Jim Peebles won the Nobel Prize two years ago. I'm even more impressed by the more recent three volume set he wrote on theoretical astrophysics. It's, it demonstrates, these, these volumes demonstrate a profound understanding of an astonishingly broad range of subjects. Furthermore, these books are not just texts. They contain a lot of material originally discovered by Paddy himself. I have focused on books rather than research papers simply because they represent a culmination of many years of work that firmly established Paddy as a world-class scientist that any leading academic institute would be proud to have on its faculty. And the letter goes on, but again, for brevity, I will just stop here. Now, the sudden passing away of such a talented scientist is shocking and extremely painful for those of us who are left behind, particularly his family. I fondly remember Paddy and his family visiting us in Penn State at our request and spending a semester here. Both, it was both socially very pleasant and also intellectually very stimulating. But for the person himself or herself, a quick death, while still productive and in full control of their creative abilities, is figuratively like the death on the battlefield that our scriptures have already have always applauded. And for that reason, in fact, I really admire that Paddy was able to be working and, product, and being so productive right until the very end. It literally is like the coveted death on a battlefield. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Ashtaker. And uh, um, so that, this um, brings out the, um, the feature of uh, today's evening. We would like very much to uh, pay tribute to Paddy in this vein, that we would like to remember his uh, contribution to our lives and the way he was and, um, and his passing away while very much being on top of things and, uh, and, and, and doing um, science uh, from the frontiers. Uh, we now move on to uh, Professor K. Vijay Raghavan, uh, Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India. Um, Vijay has known uh, um, Paddy since the, uh, the days of Tata um, um, Institute Fundamental Research, as well as um, 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 all, you know, all the way through from then, uh, I'm sure you have a lot of things to, to remember. Over to you, Vijay. I'm unmuting you. Thank you. Um, you know, Paddy's um, passing has been shocking for all of us, too sudden and too soon. Um, you will hear and have heard a lot about his science and his scientific ability. I will just um, very briefly summarize what I've learned from him as a science communicator uh, and as a you know colleague who's uh, brought physics, astrophysics, and its understanding to people at large. Uh, I'll give you two examples. The first is an essay he wrote in 2015 on 100 years of general relativity. This was an essay published in Current Science, and it makes accessible to the non-physicist scientists the beauty and complexities of general relativity. The writing style conveys nuances while packing them into a brief article. You go away thinking you've understood general uh, relativity, but the real purpose is actually to stimulate you to keep reading and searching for a better understanding. And that's the impact Paddy has had on me as a mere biologist. Paddy starts by saying, and I quote, general relativity interprets the gravitational effects as arising due to the curvature of space time. And like all profound ideas, this one with gravity is the curvature of the space time is obvious with hindsight. He then goes on beautifully and very pithily giving the example of stationary objects in an elevator moving upwards in interstellar space to introduce Einstein's principle of equivalence, connects this via special relativity to that of a clock in the elevator, 
and showing how, because of the principle of equivalence, um, the elevator must slow down, the clock must slow down, and must also do so in a gravitational field. From here, Paddy goes on to show how the conclusion emerges, and I quote, Voila, the presence of gravitational field is equivalent to the curvature of space-time. And this is done beautifully to um, explain to a non-physicist. The essay then goes on, and written in 2015, I must remind all of us, about the predictions of general relativity and how they were tested on planetary orbits, the bending of light, um, uh, gravitational waves, um, uh, quantum gravity, and so on. About um, you know the um, uh, uh, bending of light, um, Paddy points out, incidentally, this is not only the case where an effect of re general relativity, which was uh, considered to be very small in the early days, turns out to be of great practical significance. The good quality GPS, which you use routinely today, will become useless in a short span of time if the GPS satellites did not incorporate the effects of gravitational field on the flow of time. It's routinely done in order for you not to lose your way while driving. I can think of a more, I can't think of a more practical use for a theory which was once considered rather abstract, end of quote. So this is an example and needs to be conveyed how, you know, extraordinary benefits can come in due course of time with technology and from fundamental research uh, which, you know, very unpredictable. It's very important uh, to convey that now. Paddy then goes on to discuss gravitational waves and discusses very beautifully the Hulson taylor series of observations spanning over 30 years and shows how gravitational effects propagate with the speed of light. And like Maxwell's equations possess electromagnetic wave solutions, we must also have gravitational wave solutions. This is beautifully explained again to the lay reader. He ends this section by saying that, you know, the laboratory uh, testing of uh, gravitational waves would be fun, but the experiments done over decades have failed due to technological limitations. This was, of course, in 2015. And many are still underway, but contrary to what is sometimes portrayed, these experiments are not necessary to verify the prediction of gravitational waves in Einstein's theory, this has already been done with exquisite detail, leading to Hulson Taylor getting the Nobel in 1993. Of course, with the LIGO experiments, and Paddy was there to see all of this, uh, much excitement, uh, LIGO laboratories coming up uh, near uh, Pune. Um, you know, there's lots of wonderful new science which is still coming uh, and likely to come uh, from the uh, laboratory experiments. Finally, Paddy and Vasanthi have written a beautiful book, The Dawn of Science. Um, you know, when I met them last at the uh, memorial for um, Govind Swaroop, um, uh, at, at actually Govind's uh, birthday celebrations, um, this, uh, he told me about this book. And this book is a must read for all non-scientists non and for scientists too. He says here that the purpose of this book is to share the excitement the authors feel about the historical development of scientific ideas with the like-minded, curious, educated lay public. Needless to say, this is not a monograph on the history of science written by a couple of historians of science or fellow historians of science. For one, such volumes, while no doubt excellent in erudition, can be somewhat soporific in style. Our intention is that you should actually enjoy reading this book, typical of Paddy. He goes on to say, to do this in a modular and entertaining fashion, we have, uh, Vasanthi and he go on to say, we have just picked 24 topics covering different milestones in science from antiquity till about the 17th century. My last correspondence with Paddy was about this book, where he advised me uh, to read the book well, but also pointed out that the chapter on the Kerala School of Mathematics would be something which I might um, very much uh, enjoy. Uh, Paddy's loss is just, you know, uh, shook us all very badly. Uh, we, will, we will not be able to recover from this, but the way we can pay tribute to him is by ensuring that there are many, many more like him. Great scientists, great science communicators, and very understated uh, in terms of promoting themselves in a world where this happens all too much. This is something we should set ourselves to do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, um, uh, I would like to uh, highlight in, in what has been, been said so far, Paddy's role as a, a communicator, both in the form of textbooks, as well as in the form of uh, popularizing the material that he, he worked on is absolutely exemplary. 
The other thing that shines through um, his whole life and his work is his humor. He had an amazing sense of humor. And I hope that people will, um, will talk today more about stories about Paddy because we're celebrating him. I will um, mention only one. I, when I first met him, I was a first year PhD student at the University of Cambridge at the uh, Institute of Astronomy. That was also a year he was spending the whole year in at the Institute. And uh, he had arrived there and Vasanthi had not arrived. She would come a little later. And they had put him in, a, in a, um, a room, which was essentially the caretaker's room of a large graveyard on Histon Road. And so at, in the evenings, he was alone in this house, which was in the middle of a graveyard. And uh, I would go and visit him uh, and, and spend evenings talking about everything and often eat, um, um, uh, cook together and eat. And Vasanthi had taught him how to make uh, a wonderful little things. And one, is, one was, uh, he used to cook these bread pakoras. And his, in his characteristic sense of humor, he, he started by saying, I must be very careful not to make these too delicious. Otherwise, it will attract all these people who are buried in the graveyards and come up. And so this is the macabre sense of humor. It was so British and sitting there in Cambridge, surrounded by him. I thought he was very British in his, in his approach. And this shines through in some of his textbooks and also his popular books, you will see. Um, uh, wonderful uh, and, and rounds up his personality that he had this wicked wickedness in him. Uh, okay, let's move on to the next tribute, um, uh, which is uh, by um, a Professor um, K. Kasturi Rangan, who is uh, the chairman of the governing board of, um, um, of Ayuka and, um, and is, uh, of course, the, uh, an ex uh, director of uh, ex chairman of the of Department of Space. Uh, we uh, pre recorded his, his tribute to Padmanabha. I was shocked and deeply grieved. I was shocked and deeply grieved to hear about the sudden passing away of Professor Tanu Padmanabhan. He was a world renowned scientist in the area of astronomy and astrophysics and a student of Professor J.V. Narlikar, who made several seminal contributions in the fields of cosmology, relativity, and many other aspects of theoretical astrophysics. He was also a great teacher and a communicator. He wrote books which are fundamental, well known for their clarity of presentation and widely read and appreciated. Only recently, Ayuka board of which I am the chairman decided to continue his services to benefit out of his sharp mind and creative thinking at the recommendation of Professor Somak Roy Chowdhury, his present director, Professor Padmanabhan always communicated with me about any recognition or other important events involving him. And I always replied with great enthusiasm and admiration. There are many things I can write from my personal knowledge about him as a friend, as a colleague, and above all, as a role model. Difficult to believe that he is no longer with us. Society is going to be very much poorer by his absence, but life has to go on. I take this opportunity to convey my heartfelt condolences to his wife, Dr. Vasanthi Padmanabhan, and his daughter, Dr. Hamsa Padmanabhan. The modest way in which we can pay our own tributes to him is to continue the rich traditions of creativity and originality which you always spread with infectious enthusiasm and pray for his departed soul to rest in peace. Thank you. Uh, well, hi. next is uh, Professor Navesh Dadich, uh, uh, former Ayuka director, who probably had a lot to do with Paddy right from the beginning. You want to share your video, okay? <clears throat> yeah. Yes, Navesh, please. Okay. Okay, thank you, Kandu. <clears throat> uh, like a giant, I had not met, but I had seen uh, Paddy in the Einstein Centenary meeting in 1979 at PRL Ahmedabad. As a matter of fact, he was, he was another <coughs> student, Rajiv, who is in uh, Rochester. And these two were the young stars of that meeting. And subsequently, 
when he joined PI for a student, I used to meet him. As a matter of fact, you and him and some others used to share a room, and you two were reading MTW from cover to cover. Uh, mid seventies till the inception of Ayuka, I was visiting TI for almost every week and longer visits during the summer. So I have seen Friday and the entire astrophysics group of uh, uh, theoretical physics group at uh, TIFR. Now, <clears throat> apart from being a master of the entire gambit of theoretical physics, he was always interested in some fundamental questions. And his last love here it was the understanding gravity through thermodynamics, all that exploring the relationship between gravity and thermodynamics. That is what has consumed him for the last decade and a half. <clears throat> In his research, he was a very courageous and did not hesitate to try a very outlandish ideas. And in this, he adhered to what I call the Donald Lyndon Bell's principle that says that unless one writes a few or one or two wrong papers, one has not fully explored one's own capability. And Paddy this to a great advantage. As Jain said, he was a very good student. And what do you, do you want from a good student to do? That he should do better than one's teacher. On this count, he, in, in all aspects, he turned out exceptional. He wrote books, he wrote good papers, uh, popular science, except I thought he did not try his hand at uh, writing some fiction. <laughs> but for that, he, he did almost everything and built up a formidable international reputation. It has always been a great pleasure when visiting places, universities abroad to see his books on people's desks and his work being very admiringly talked about in meetings and conferences. He did his science with great passion and in his own, in his own style. As a matter, and he thought that he did, he did science because it was fun. And he thoroughly enjoyed it. It's like doing, playing cricket or dance, doing uh, dancing or doing painting or writing poetry. That's one thing he spared somehow. <laughs> For him, doing science was a way of life. Perhaps Ayuka should have charged him some fee for letting him do what he liked to do most to his heart's content. Lastly, I would like to say two things. Perry was inspired to do physics by Feynman's lectures. And I think it is in great tradition what Feynman did to Perry Paddy has done to so many others of his students and the postdocs. Lastly, I would say he was 11 years younger to me, but was that many fold stronger and deeper scientist. With, with warmest <clears throat> fullness and warmth, 
I salute him. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tarish. Uh, we will have uh, Ajit, uh, who is also our former director and very close associate of Padre. Ajit, can you please? Uh, yeah. <coughs> Uh, during the last year or so, um, we have lost a number of astrophysicists, uh, including uh, Professor Goen Swarup and Professor Srikumar Chitre. <clears throat> now, very sadly and shockingly, uh, Professor T. Padmanabhan has joined that August group. The difference in his case is that Paddy was still a very dynamic person, riding on the crest of his creativity. He was not often visible but he was always in touch. I did not see him for the last uh, two years at least. And even before that, um, our encounters mainly were accidental and happened in the corridors of Ayaka. But before that, of course, I met him um, I, for, for the last 40 years. I've been meeting him in TIFR, in Cambridge, um, and in Pune. Uh, <coughs> we, uh, even though we did not meet, we called each other from time to time. His presence was always very palpable. And I find it hard to believe that he is no longer there, that I will no longer run into him, um, which I've done for about 40 years now. We um, never did any project together, but at least on two occasions, we got together and uh, very seriously discussed the possibility uh, of doing something together on uh, the borderline of uh, science and science management. Uh, but unfortunately, the projects never took off. Now, of course, it's too late. Uh, we would both have had more time on our hands than we did before. And maybe we could have done now what we thought we'd do many years ago. Then uh, there are many ways in which we can pay tribute to Paddy. There are so many meetings. Uh, there's this meeting, and then tomorrow, there's going to be a meeting in Kerala and so on and so forth. Uh, some of the tributes will be short run, some will last for a long time. <clears throat> but I believe that the best we could do uh, to remember him is to make his admired books very widely available. And every speaker has mentioned his books. They are going to be a great legacy. I mean, science changes fashions. Uh, <clears throat> but the solid truths that his books provide uh, are there forever. So I can imagine that the books will remain current for decades or even longer. But we should make them easily available. I'm sure that we can find a way in which every student or young researcher in the country can read his books uh, more or less free of charge or the internet. And uh, this could be a good beginning. Um, he has written many books. Not many people have reached his level, but others have written wonderful books too. And then we could start making these books available to anyone who wants to read them and will benefit from their absolute excellence. That would be the best tribute for him. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ajit. Uh, and next, I'll call upon Rajaram Nityananda, who has also known Paddy for an extremely long time, to say a few words. Um, Rajaram, please. Uh, thank you, Kandu. Uh, it's a very strange feeling to be talking in the past tense of someone so alive as Paddy, uh, nine years younger than me. I, I thought in this meeting, I just share some recollections and impressions very much in my frame of reference. Uh, I've realized they are gathered over some 44 years from our first contact in a summer school in the Raman Research Institute in 1977. And the most recent contact was just 11 days back. Uh, but uh, our probably most intense interaction was in the decade starting around 1987, where we fortuitously met in Cambridge, same time that Somak was referring to. Um, I was kind of brushing with gravitation and cosmology via gravitational lenses. So that was one common topic, but Paddy's curiosity about all of physics, interest in problems, paradoxes, pedagogy, made for many discussions. Uh, we both had enough time in that period. And these discussions were made livelier by our very contrasting approaches. Uh, and uh, this uh, interaction continued. I paid two visits to Kolaba, hosted by him, 1998, uh, 88, 92. And he came to Ararai for several weeks. 
and we filled in the gaps in this exchange with old fashioned handwritten letters. And looking back, I think it was not so much a collaboration. We wrote exactly one paper together and uh, characteristically the order of authors was decided by a coin toss. But uh, I think <laughs> uh, he looked upon me as a kind of sparring partner, you know, someone who looks at things differently and you bounce things off him. And uh, of course I gained enormously from that. One thing I learned very early uh, to respect him, admire was his wide and thorough reading. Now where he found the time for this, given his own writing, research, professional responsibilities will always be a mystery. Uh, but over the years, uh, especially in Pune, whenever I realized I had a good book, which I had enjoyed, uh, but I wasn't going to read again, I would call Paddy up and uh, the destination was sometimes his personal library. And he always came back with a critical review of the book as well. Uh, I would say that like a black body, Paddy absorbed almost anything and he processed it thoroughly. So what emerged finally bore his unmistakable stamp. So if I had to kind of sum up uh, the feelings I had, I'm reminded of a piece I read by uh, Fred Hoyle who wrote about himself that in his very early days, he learned two important traits, elegance and uh, ruthlessness. And uh, Paddy did not need to learn this from the Garana because he had them <laughs> even when we first saw him in uh, 1977. <clears throat> if you look at the clarity, the structure, the economy in his writings, and even more so I would say in his talks, that is surely a pursuit of elegance. And he could also ruthlessly bypass fashionable trends uh, for example, in his favorite area of quantum gravity, he struck out his own path based on the thermodynamic perspective that he uh, found attractive and worked on extensively. Now, uh, from my own decade at NCRA, uh, of course, we were both quite preoccupied uh, professionally, but I'd like to recall his serving as a chair of the GMRT Time Allocation Committee. It's a role which uh, may have surprised many people, but uh, briefing him on what this involved just took exactly one day. We drove to Kodan, stayed a few hours, drove back, and during this entire time, he educated himself in this uh, nitty gritty of observational radio astronomy by asking extremely searching questions to everyone. I, I trust that he enjoyed this novel experience and he had many such experiences uh, and achievements. Many more would have come his way, I'm absolutely sure. Uh, if only his time had not been so cruelly uh, cut short. Thank you. Thank you, Radharam, for those kind words. Uh, can I call upon Ramki, who actually joined with both Paddy and me to say a few words? And Thank you. Now the Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you, Gandhu. Actually, it's a great shock to me, and uh, this is something which even my worst nightmare could not bring this news. I'm I'm deeply saddened, and uh, you know, as Kandu said, uh, I was privileged to be his batchmate, and we had many stars in our group: Kandu, then G. Rajaram, and so on. I first met him in 1979 August. Rajaram introduced to me, Ramki, you must meet this person, and so on. It was very clear among us that uh, this guy is cut above the rest and uh, he was an absolute genius and I, I had learned many things from him and uh, you know there, that was the time there was a slightly lull in our graduate school you know we didn't have a formal lectures and so on Paddy decided that we each of us have to give evening lectures on the topic uh, which you are you know familiar with and so on and those uh, lectures are usually a grilling session from Paddy, make us, you know, understand even more than what we know about our subjects and so on. And uh, of course, we had uh, also, I think as thieves participated in various adventures, uh, which I think I will not say here, I will cherish them because they are really fun memories. I must also tell you that Paddy is extremely mentally strong. I think probably towards the second year, his uh, second brother has passed away. And uh, those days, you know, we didn't have mobile or anything. He got a telegram and then he just came and knocked at my door and said, Ramki, can you just uh, 
helped me out. And so I didn't know what was there. And uh, the first he did was to talk to his parents and then to his sister-in-law to reassure them that he will be there. And then we went to the Air India building to get the ticket. He went back and, uh, you know, somehow he managed to give them courage to bear this loss. And then I think later time he brought his parents here. And, uh, you know, I, myself and my wife had interesting, you know, after that, uh, interesting meetings with him. And when he was here till 1992, we used to meet uh, each other, our families, and we were very, very close. And uh, the other thing about him is that he will always ready to help in everything which which I ventured and so on, and uh, always give me brotherly advice how one should go about things. And uh, I think both Vasandi and Patty were extremely helpful to us. And the other thing which I knew is that uh, this mental strength runs in the family. Actually, when he went to receive one of his innumerable awards with Vasandi sometime, he left the parents with us and uh, uh, his mother got a heart attack, which we have admitted into a hospital in Bombay Hospital, I'd say. But his mother told me that, you know, don't alarm Paddy, let him get his award from the president and let him come and so on. We just, of course, we informed him. And the mother told me that, you know, see, I, you can't do this every time. This guy, my son is going to receive innumerable number of awards because that is probably the first one he received at a young age. And she was extremely vocal and saying that, uh, you know, this guy will go far. But so that was really prophetic words from her. And uh, so I, I knew that, you know, the mental strength is runs in the family. And uh, so we always had friendly batters, banters. And then, you know, we used to have a bet on, you know, he used to come out with some funny partial differential equations. And, uh, you know, there's a bet of 50 rupees those days. Who solves first? I rarely won. I think most of the time, I think he won <laughs> on the bet. And I always wanted a chance to score something over him in the form of some words and so on. It so happened that uh, his daughter, Hamza, was here some, some years ago giving a public talk at a young age. So I told Paddy that maybe she has beaten you. And you no, know, then he coldly informs me, said, no, no, I was a few days before her when I gave the talk. So, you know, she can't match me and so on. It's a, it is a family of bright people. I think Vasanthi is equal, equally bright. And, uh, you know, Paddy had several intellectual pursuits and also the domestic issues. Vasanthi played an inter integral part of it. At this loss is going to be tremendous for both Vasandi and Hamsa. I hope that time will heal this to some extent. But Paddy is never going to go away. His books and his students will keep him, keep everybody remember him. And uh, really, the nation and the world has lost a great physicist. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Ramki, for those. Uh valuable recollections. I would like to uh, call upon now uh, Professor Martin Rees uh, of University of Cambridge, also the Astronomer Royal of the United Kingdom, to share his thoughts. Martin, please. Okay, you may have to unmute him. No, I had unmuted him. He's oh, okay. become muted again. Oh. Martin, your audio is muted. Martin's video, Martin's video has gone too. He was there about a minute. The video ago. is, yeah, yeah. It's okay. I think it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Something happened to his connection. He's, he's become the co host.
So he should be able to unmute. Uh, so he can unmute himself. Yes. Uh, to uh, uh, Ruth and then come back to Martin. Okay. Um, okay, we are we have, appear to be having some technical issues with the service. So we will uh, come back to him. Now. May I, in the meantime, request uh, Professor Ruth Dura, you know, Professor of Astroparticle Physics in uh, University of Geneva, to uh, share her thoughts. I will uh, unmute. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Um, I was deeply shocked, like all of you, when I heard that Patty had passed away so untimely. Uh, I have very fond recollections also of the first time I met Paddy. It was in Cambridge, I think end of the 90s. I'm not entirely sure, but I think it was like end of the 90s. And uh, he gave a talk on the cosmological constant problem. And after, uh, after his talk, I asked him some questions and we went together for a walk and we discussed the problem. And I remember I, I was extremely pleased to be finally meet the person whose books I had admired since a long time. I was especially, I always thought uh, astronomy is too complicated and astrophysics is too complicated for me to understand. But uh, Paddy's books, they were so clear, written really in a physicist language, which I could understand as a theoretical physicist. And I think his, his books are really masterpieces. He is an amazingly good teacher. For this reason, I also invited him to visit us in Geneva to come and give uh, a course in our uh, doctoral school in Geneva. He gave a really very, very beautiful course about advanced topics in general relativity, where he also touched upon, that was in the around 2005, 2010, where he also touched upon he, the, uh, his ideas about gravity being an emergent theory. And so that maybe quantizing the metric might be as wrong as trying to quantize the temperature of a system. So this, uh, this was a, a, a very, very good course, which all our students appreciated. I also remember fondly him and uh, Vashanti at our house in our garden, him playing chess with my husband. Uh, Patty was also a very uh, gifted and enthusiastic chess player. Of course, he didn't, he didn't have that much time to devote to this game as he devoted to physics, but I'm sure that he also would have uh, could have become a very, very brilliant chess player if he would have done that. Um, apart from his, his books, which I think will be his lasting legacy for many generations of students to come and which, are, which really show his clear uh, thinking as a theoretical physicist, uh, I also like a lot his review on the cosmological constant problem, the right of the vacuum from uh, 2002 and I always, I always admired his uh, clear way of thinking, his uh, uh, very elegant way of deriving results or for example, his little uh, uh, marvel of a book, The Sleeping Beauties of Theoretical Physics, they show exactly what he, what he aspired, you know, the elegance in physics which uh, I find much, much more interesting and fascinating than uh, machine learning or so, which are uh, directions where, uh, where pe uh, people nowadays or in the future will want to try to solve problems in physics. I think Patty is one of the great physicists of our generation. And I always admired him and I surely will never forget him. He will stay a part of us all, I think. 
thank you for giving me the, uh, this occasion to share a few thoughts about Paddy with you. Thank you very much. May I now request Professor Martin Rees to unmute and uh, uh, share his thoughts. Okay, yes. Yes, we can uh, see you and hear you. We got muted again. But uh, uh, let me say that I'm in Cambridge and I am uh, speaking really on behalf of many colleagues, all of whom remember Paddy and are deeply saddened and shocked by his premature death. I first met him more than 30 years ago um, at a summer school in India uh, where he and Kandu jointly helped me to write up my lectures. And ever since then, I've benefited hugely from uh, reading his works and through meeting him. And of course, as has been said already, uh, he visited Cambridge very often. He had one uh, very long visit of a year, but he came uh, very frequently on shorter stays. And of course, he was widely known internationally in this country and in the United States. And what was so impressive was his uh, range and his energy. Abby Astakar has already commented on this, and we know about his books, his original ideas on the nature of space and time. And I think in terms of his books, um, we could describe him as the um, Landau and Lifshitz of astrophysics, because there are several volumes and they're really comprehensive, and let's hope they are indeed lasting and are made widely available. I remember contributing to his 60th birthday festschrift not long ago. And of course, the number of authors in that testified to his international reputation. In my contribution, I said a little bit about the three different ways in which scientists grow old. It's fairly clear that Paddy was right at his peak and what is so sad is that he will never grow old. But we can remember him and we can be inspired by what he did during his very energetic and active life. And I want to pass on my condolences to him and his family and to uh, pass on also those of his many friends here in Cambridge. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Martin. May I now call upon uh, Professor S. Sridhar, Director of Raman Research Institute, but he was also a colleague at Ayuka of Paddy for you know, quite a long while. Sridhar, please. You are still muted. Can you unmute yourself? Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, the news of Paddy's uh, sad demise has been a shock to all of us. A week later, we are gathered here to share our memories, and I would like to thank the organizers for this opportunity to contribute. When I had submitted my thesis at the Raman Research Institute and was in the process of applying for postdoctoral positions, I spent some time at uh, the Tata Institute as a visiting fellow in the theoretical astrophysics group. I knew some people at uh, uh, theory astrophysics from earlier. Of these, Kandu, Sesh, and TP had left. Paddy was still there. We shared an interest in uh, gravitational physics him more towards cosmology and mine uh, towards galaxies. But eventually, I began to spend more and more time learning cosmology. So we met regularly through the day, you know, in our offices, in the canteen, and various places at TFR, and sometimes outside. Uh, and at some point, Narsuma also joined us. For reasons beyond recall, so Paddy and I once decided to collaborate on a new project. Every weekday morning, 
we would take the 6 a.m. TIFR bus, get down at the President Hotel bus stop, and start jogging north on the pavements. We'd go about one kilometer and then stop to have tea at a roadside cart, uh, look at the uh, tall buildings in South Bombay, and walk over to the nearest uh, uh, TIFR bus stop very slowly for a return trip uh, back to TIFR. This lasted about a month, after which Paddy and I returned to our uh, normal sleep patterns. So I'm guessing that uh, that's the most uh, Paddy and I have ever jogged in our lives. Uh, in between all this, uh, the informal discussions got a bit more focused and uh, led to a workshop we organized at uh, TFR on uh, galaxy formation in September 1990. So that's uh, what I uh, wish to share. So thank you all for listening. Thank you very much, Sridhar. I would like to now request Professor Yashwan Gupta, who is the director of the National Center for Radio Astrophysics across the road from America, to share his thoughts. Yeah. Um... Thank you. And uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, as we all know and have heard from uh, many others who have spoken before me, uh, Paddy was indeed an outstanding scientist in many ways. From basic concepts of physics, which he brought out so eloquently in his books, to the most complicated ideas in cosmology, quantum gravity, and beyond, he had a fantastic hold on various topics. However, there were some different and interesting aspects about Paddy that one learned about and came to admire as one got to know him better. He always brought a unique and different viewpoint and approach to any topic that he took up. Uh, one of the first memories that I have when I was uh, a relative newcomer at NCRA is of being on interview committees for selection of prospective uh, PhD students for the joint graduate school of Ayuka and NCRA. That's the first time I really saw him in action. And those of us who've been on any such committees uh, with Paddy uh, saw his unique approach on handling the interview process. Uh, some of which I have to say left newcomers like me somewhat nonplussed. Uh, but it was uh, over a few years that uh, at least some like me began to realize his wisdom of uh, handling the issues uh, in that process. Uh, another example I remember is uh, from the workings uh, of a group to discuss physics of neutron stars that was set up uh, by M. Vivekanand in the early 1990s, uh, uh, starting uh, out with a smaller group at NCRA. And Vivek decided to invite Paddy to join the discussions. And some of us wondered about uh, what value uh, a cosmologist would bring to this discussion. Uh, but I was amazed uh, with the speed with which Paddy picked up the basics and then the kind of insights he was able to provide to the discussion. And that's when I began to realize what kind of a scientist uh, Paddy was. Later, as I got to know him better, I found that though he was an uh, outstanding in his treatment of any topic in theoretical physics and astrophysics, he also had a keen interest in the experimental side of things. And he loved to discuss progress of our work at the GMRT, and again, bringing some interesting insights uh, unique uh, uh, of his own uh, to the discussion. And in fact, as uh, Rajaram uh, also alluded, uh, we had the benefit of his sharp acumen and strong organizational abilities uh, as the chair of the GMRT Time Allocation Committee for three years, uh, 2006 to 2009. And it was the early years of the GMRT it was only the third uh, GMRT time allocation committee. Um, and the GMRT was still, you know, uh, ironing out uh, some of the issues. And as Rajaram alluded, I won't uh, say too much more uh, that uh, Paddy showed, uh, you know, uh, he took on this as an interesting challenge. And, you know, he showed uh, amazing abilities to pick up what is required and, uh, and made a, a grand success out of it. Um, in fact, uh, I remember him telling me in a discussion towards the end of his tenure in his usual witty style that uh, it was great fun, 
now none of you radio astronomers can pull a fast one on me about how a radio observatory works, or even better, how it does not work. And that was Paddy. So it's uh, with great sadness that our entire community will really very sorely miss this great scientist and remarkable personality. My heartfelt condolences go out to Vasanthi and Hamsa. Paddy, uh, may your soul rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Yashwan. So next up, uh, we have Professor Alexander Refugee, who is the head of the cosmology group at ETH Zurich, uh, and whose association with Paddy goes back about a decade or so, when Paddy was invited to visit and give talks at the physics department and cosmology group there. Uh, I happened to be a postdoc there at the time, and I remember discussing with Alex how it might be great to have Paddy there, and the whole family had come for what turned out to be an excellent and fruitful visit. So Alex, please, uh, please take it away. I was deeply saddened by the news about Paddy's passing away. Paddy was a friend. He was also an esteemed colleague. Um, and I think these, the combination of the depth of his understanding, the, uh, his creativity and originality, and the uh, productivity was outstanding and extraordinary. He leaves a legacy of um, papers, books, lectures, which are um, extremely deep and also uh, communicates the love of science to the next generation. I will cherish a lot of memories with, that, we, that I have with Paddy. Um, I went on frequent visits to Paddy and his family in, in Ayuka, and also, as um, Azim just said, he also came to visit at ETH on a sabbatical uh, with Vasanti. And, uh, and we had many discussions about all aspects of physics, and I will uh, deeply miss all these discussions and the depth of his understanding of almost all aspects of, of physics. Uh, Hamza also, his daughter, uh, was a postdoc in our group for several years, and that also deepened the connection with Paddy and Vasanti and his, and his family. I, I would like you to ask, please uh, join me in sending uh, our condolences to Vasanti, Hamza, the rest of his family, uh, and also his, his friends. He will be greatly missed by all of us. Thank you, Alex. So as a student of Paddy, one comes across, uh, you know, countably infinite number of Paddy anecdotes. Uh, some of these you have already, we have already heard today. I'm sure there will be many more to come, uh, but a finite and very large number of these were revealed in a very memorable session on reminiscences uh, that we had in a conference that Tirth and I had the pleasure of organizing a few years ago uh, for celebrating Paddy's 60th birthday. And what I remember most about that session is the really large number of amazing stories that came out uh, from Kandu and who you have heard until now hosting other people, but now it's his turn to tell us a little bit about, uh, about how he feels and, and about Paddy. So Kandu, please go ahead. Thank you, Asim. Yeah, it, uh, it was extremely shocking that uh, uh, when I heard that Paddy passed away because to some extent he was like part of my life, at least in the early part, a very integral part. And over 40 plus years, we have known each other. And I was hoping that uh, we will both retire together and we'll pull each other's legs at some stage later. So of course, Paddy and I joined together along with Ramki, Shankar, who, who you will soon learn uh, hear from, joined a year after us, and Narsima, who is also here, joined a year before. And we had great amount of interaction. Um, most people here would, of course, know all this uh, good, uh, the science that he does, the fantastic amount of papers, the books, everything that is there. But I know him as a close friend at, uh, for a very long period of time. So, of course, as Asim said, I have many stories. Uh, maybe I can share one or two. But uh, Ramki was telling you about these night lectures, and uh, Paddy was fantastic. I mean, 
if not for him, we would not have, we would probably have just, you know, gone for movies or something, but he really made us all work quite hard teaching each other uh, these things. Interestingly, I taught differential geometry and topology, which I don't know whether I remember or not. But Paddy's extremely hardworking person. I think uh, Naresh probably mentioned this thing about um, MTW. I probably just glanced at it once in a while. Paddy, I think during his undergraduate days has worked through the whole of Misnathon and Wheeler, solved all the problems, which is obviously why his, uh, you know, his grasp of gravitation, general relativity is so fantastic. And I remember that uh, once he wrote a paper, and I think I probably in those early years read almost every paper of his. Me and Shankar were some of his sounding boards for the various papers, maybe Narsimha also. And one of his papers, when it went to Jain, Jain started seeing these very strange symbols all over the place and called him. What are these symbols? But he said, oh, I ran out of Greek alphabets. So these are Malayalam letters. So Jain said, no, 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 no Malayalam letter in the paper. <laughs> so this is uh, what Paddy's papers were typically like. Uh, he, I used to call him, as I said, the master of the Planck spectrum. Like, uh, you know, there are these 36 chambers of Shaolin. He had 36 different ways of deriving Planck spectrum because he was interested in the accelerated frames and why Planck spectrum comes about there. And it was uh, really great. And then we also, you know, enjoyed a lot of time together playing carom. Uh, we were partners in carom. Uh, we went to movies. We ate resta We ate at restaurants. At restaurants, it was very interesting. Because Patty is a very spruce eater. He doesn't eat too much. Doesn't like sweets. All complimentary to me. So I always gain not from physics, but from us going to restaurants together because I finished off everything that he left and finished off all the sweets that you would never eat. So our relationship that day was more like, uh, you know, very close, very close friends. And uh, uh, we used to take bets all the time. Rajaram already mentioned that he tossed the coin to see who is the first author of that. He always did that. Most of the time he won. Sometimes he didn't. Once he was made not to, and once we took a bet that India will win the 1983 World Cup. Now, I always bet for India, and Paddy always puts a bet in whatever he thinks is the proper thing. So, you know, 1983, nobody expected India to win. So we said, okay, uh, one rupee versus 10 rupees. One rupee if India, uh, you know, Lost and 10 rupees, I will get if India won. Paddy said, one rupee is too much. You will definitely give me one rupee. Let's make it 10 and 100. So that was the one time when I won 100 rupees from Paddy. Because India won the 1983 World Cup. Later he told me that actually he had taken an opposite bet with another friend of ours, probably Ramki. I don't know whether it was Ramki. And so he didn't lose too much. So that was also Paddy. You know, he, he really... Uh, was very, very uh, good at, uh, at various things. We spent a lot of time as postdocs. When he was a postdoc, people all did science. We kind of fed each other because his original uh, thing when he went on a postdoc at Cambridge was that he will eat one year of salads. Now imagine eating one year of salads. When I heard this from him, I told him, you are mad. I can make a few things, let's make those things. So we made those things. He became better at uh, certain things. I became better at certain things. Every weekend almost we would meet. We would talk physics. We had never written a paper together. We started writing a paper together on gravitational lensing. We started reading galaxy formation together. We even afterwards wrote a maybe 100 plus pages, maybe 150 page review on galaxy formation. and. Uh, we wrote a few papers together. At one stage, we said one of our papers was rejected. And then we said, oh, you know, this is very bad. If people are rejecting our papers. We should only write a paper together if it's going to be as good as to win a Nobel Prize. Obviously, we never wrote a paper after that. Because we, we never did that. 
So, I mean, I can go on. The most recent thing, encounter, which I, I mean, talk which I had with Patty during COVID times, we hardly ever met except during box, but he did call me once a few months back and wanted to discuss a physics question. And we discussed at great length about this. Then uh, something about random box taking derivatives. And then afterwards I said, okay, I will send you a few papers which I had looked at. Then he sent me back a mail after that and said, thanks. Meanwhile, I am trying to do it all from first principles, reinventing several wheels. But as we both know, that is something, sometimes the best route. So this was also Paddy. He was never the person who will actually take something from somewhere. He'll work out everything. He had enough energy to work out anything from scratch. And he had enough uh, intelligence, brilliance, et cetera, to do everything from scratch. I mean, it's fantastically sad to uh, feel that I will not be able to pull his leg or vice versa. And uh, my most amount of grief is always for those who survive and, and to Vasanti and to Hamsa, my heart really goes out. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Kandu. I think this is the way I also feel we should remember Paddy as being mischievous and funny and always supremely confident. Even when he is wrong, which may or may not happen very frequently, but supremely confident. Uh, this is how I remember him. And uh, one of the things that you mentioned about uh, this idea of uh, trying to derive everything from scratch, I think this is something that all of his students feel from him and get inspired to do as well. So I think most of us are probably people who will never make it to an IIT entrance examination because we will go there and in two hours try to derive everything from scratch. Right? So, and speaking of examinations, one of the other things that I will sorely miss is the level of originality which he brought to INAT questions. INAT, for those people who don't know, is our PhD entrance examination at Ayuka. It used to be shared with NCRA. And it was a pleasure over the last uh, six or seven years to, to you know, help in organizing this and get questions from him. I remember locking myself in a room with Tirth uh, over at NCRA so that nobody can see us because we need to solve this question which Paddy has given us. He has not told us which is the correct answer. Okay, so we have to figure it out ourselves and we don't want other people to know how, how woefully ignorant we are on basic physics. So it used to be great fun. Uh, that will be very much missed. Thanks, Kamu. Thank you. So next, uh, we have another old colleague of Paddy from his TIFR days, uh, Professor Shankar Ramachandran, who is currently at, uh, uh, at IMSC Chennai. Shankar, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I see Paddy, I first met Paddy in 1976 in a summer school in IIT Kharagpur. There was one summer school before the Bangalore one that Raja Ram had mentioned. Now, it was very obvious to all of us, like Ramki said some time ago, that here was here's a guy out of the ordinary. I mean, he was just uh, a phenomenon over there. He gave a talk uh, titled uh, uh, Propagation of Electromagnetic Waves in Curved Space-Time. So this was the summer school was after our second year BSc. So, uh, and after, of course, past 30 years have shown that he was completely out of the ordinary. But uh, I would like to share an anecdote with, about how I found about one of his lesser known contributions. That is what I call the Paddy phrase. Now, you know, as all of you know, around 1984, Berry wrote a paper where he gave a geometric interpretation to a part of the phase picked up by the quantum mechanic wave function. This paper created a huge flurry. There were a large number of papers that followed it that uh, indicated where that phase came in different physical contexts, et cetera, et cetera. So it got dubbed as the phase that launched a thousand scripts. Now, this is such a catchy phrase that it also caught on. You can Google it. 
it's all over the place. But everybody says that someone said this. Actually, it was Paddy. Uh, so that's why I call it the Paddy phrase. I also didn't know. So in this uh, 60th uh, birthday conference, I had given a talk where I mentioned Berry phase. I mentioned this phrase, a uh, phrase that launched a thousand scripts and attributed it to Professor Ramesh. That's what I thought. Uh, after the talk, he came to me and cribbed. He said, no, it is not translation, it is me. Uh, I had coined this phrase in a conference in uh, RRI Bangalore in 1988. So then we began a mini project of, you know, why did I attribute it to Ramasation? Where did this phrase get first printed, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of interneting. He co-opted Rajaram, who was uh, Rajaram Nityanan, who was in uh, RRI during that conference. And uh, I'll spare you the details, but all said and done, finally we got documentary proof in the terms of an article written by Ramasation, where he clearly attributes this phrase to Paddy. So it is the Paddy's phrase. So after that was over, I got a triumphant mail from, I mean, this final paper was located with the help of Ayuka Library. And he, I got a mail from him uh, titled, Ramasation not guilty, rad to be convicted, Perry let off with caution. So that was Paddy. Uh, and it, that, that was Paddy's story of Paddy's phrase. So we last met actually in 2018 when I was visiting Aysar Pune. And um, we got talking about, you know, we are getting old. There's a finite probability that both of us, either of us or both of us are going to die. And he recalled uh, Yudhishthira's famous comment on this saying that, yes, I mean, um, the comment goes something like, uh, you know, though the most surprising thing in the world is that though people see others dying around them all the time, they somehow believe that it won't happen to them. Now, neither of us were in that category. So we had decided ki we should meet more often than we'd been meeting earlier. But after that, COVID happened and uh, unfortunately, he's gone. Thank you. Thank you, Shankar. Some of my most memorable memories at Ayuka have been in Paddy's office. I have been associated with Ayuka now for almost two decades, but really the most intense time for me has been the time spent in his office, uh, air-conditioned room, one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations, extremely intense. Right. And uh, I remember as an undergrad student, this used to be, it, it was extremely awe-inspiring for me at the time. Uh, but there were other interesting memories from Ayuka of those times, which is to sit in the kund and share other stories of Paddy from the other side. So one of the people with whom I ha have very fond recollections of sharing this is uh, Anand, uh, Professor R. Sriyanand, who has been a faculty here for uh, more than two decades now. Uh, so Anand, Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Asim. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I came to Ayuka in '94 after finishing PhD from Utkal University. Since I'm not a person who has done, so as Sridhar used to call me, that I had a backdoor entry to astrophysics because I didn't have any credentials of doing research from big institutes or doing. Uh, postdoc from abroad. There are several people who mentored me in Ayuka to where I have reached, and definitely Paddy is one of them. Until very recently, I went back to him on every decision I have to make or every science, interesting science results I got, I used to go back to him. I'll just narrate, uh, I think he, in short, he made me aware of what is my limit in research. Uh, I think uh, it's he, he, he helped me setting up the bar. He's one of them. I'm not going to say completely him. And he's one of the crucial members in Ayuka who enabled me to set 
where I can reach. I'll just give some uh, occasions which helped me turn my career. Two incidences, I will narrate it. So one is that uh, he used to come to my uh, uh, flat in the nights with Sri Ram and me, and we used to have uh, coffee sessions for hours together because, uh, and we used to run away from him whenever he posts a paper in Astro PH because we know that that night he will be in our thing, we cannot do any work. So he used to land up around nine and uh, tell us all sorts of stories till one o'clock or two o'clock till we are dead tired. And he's so loud and he will be telling stories about everybody in Ayuka. We used to be afraid. Like we, so I was just a postdoc at that time. And he used to mention that uh, whatever he's saying is not official, right? Because we are not telling to anybody. If they hear, if somebody hears his uh, comments, it is well and good. But, but me and Sriram used to be dead uh, scared of these things. So one such day, suddenly he landed up in my uh, thing. And he told me that you have to give series of lectures starting from Monday. It was on Friday. I didn't know the full story and full politics behind that lecture series. Uh, it, this lecture series he and Vivek used to organize. It used to be between night 8.30 and infinity in the sense that it, sessions can go on till people are tired. So you start giving lectures, people will ask questions. And if there is a question which is difficult, you have to derive everything in the board. There is nothing like, uh, I was so scared. I didn't even know why he asked me. I asked him why. He said that there was a scheduled lecture series. For some reason, it got canceled. We don't want to cancel this series and you have to give this lecture. I, I, I didn't know anything at that time. So I, I think next three days, I didn't sleep. Uh, I, I just vividly remember that. Because I know that when you are giving in front of uh, Paddy and other people, we have to be at much higher level. And I was not matured at that time. But I put up uh, my show and it, it went on. Of course, it triggered uh, Vijay Kapahi of NCR asking me to apply for a job. It was too early in my life. And this lecture series completely changed, uh, changed my career because events which unfolded after this, I realized that it was highly political. And it ended up somehow, I ended up being faculty in Ayuka. I, I would say that that is a good turning point. I don't know what happened, uh, why Paddy decided to ask me to give this lecture series. I have no idea. So I got the job, and uh, I think we, me and Sriram were sitting in my office the first day, the same office I used to sit in this thing. Paddy walks in and says that, congratulations. Then he told me, till now, you understood how to write papers. I think you should start doing physics at some stage. I think this is how he used to, he used to tell us. And it was very shocking to me and uh, I don't give up and people know me know that. And I started saying that, what do you mean by physics? We had a long argument and he used to keep telling me, you have to do physics, you have to do physics. And there is one more event happened during that period. Professor Alan Omo was visiting Ayuka and um, I, I went and talked to him because I started a collaboration with Patrick Petitjean and we want to put an Indo-French proposal so that we can have a money for doing this thing. So Alan, Alan told me like, oh, uh, Paddy and uh, Francois Boucher has just got a project. Why can't you go, oh, guys go and talk to them and join the project so that you don't have to wait for travel grant and all, you can get it. So I just go to Paddy and say like, hey, this, uh, this is what is the session, what do you say? He said, oh, you please join. There is no problem. And you and Patrick can just use the money and do what you want. So that uh, all of you know that that triggered the series of uh, Indo-French program and several important discoveries in quasar absorption line studies. I think that is where the trigger coming from Paddy. Offshoot of this was very interesting. He also told me one of the interaction, okay, fine, but we cannot be dummy co-PIs, right? Why can't we start something on our own? So he just gave me a paper and uh, told me that, oh, why can't you read this paper? This is the log normal distribution of few, uh, uh, so she told me like, why can't we Q and Gennadin or whatever, so series of two, three papers on intergalactic medium and told me like, why can't you read up and we'll start this, I think. So that led to, uh, we gave series, again, I gave a series of 16 or 20 lectures on that and Paddy gave 20 lectures on uh, background cosmology. We started learning this and started doing uh, simulations of intergalactic medium. And uh, that has led to the thesis of Tirthankar Rai Chaudhary. We jointly co-authored and uh, we wrote a couple of papers together. And later on in the same topic uh, as, uh, as history will have it, I and we, we had a paper, Padmanabhan, Sri Anand and Chaudhary. We end up writing one more series of Padmanabhan, Sri Anand and Chaudhary. At that time, Paddy was replaced by Hamsa and uh, it, was, uh, it was very reassuring. And uh, 
uh, at some stage he was started stop i should say he stopped saying that i should do physics he thought that i have at least written some two papers which is in physics i didn't really know whether he gave up on me or he thought that i have done some physics later on i thought i will wait for some time and ask him when he retires and goes whether he feels that i am doing physics or not but now i don't have that opportunity to ask this question i will always remember sadi and uh, somehow he keeps coming in my head and keep telling me please do physics and uh, i think that is the kind of impression he left on some younger minds i keep telling people like asim that they miss such guidance from people like me because i cannot i don't have that kind of stature to impart such kind of wisdom to these younger people i hope that paddy was with us and more interacting with all these younger people so that they can reach their full potential i use this opportunity to convey my condolences to vasanthi and hamsa and we are there to help you whenever you need any help from us vasanthi and hamsa thank you Adil. thank you shri adan uh, we will uh, shortly move to a recorded message from professor ashok sen but before that uh, let me just uh, bring in one small anecdote uh, paddy had been telling us about all the evening sessions they had had as uh, students at gfr and encouraged us to start uh, some of our own and one of the things which we started at that time shortly after he joined was uh, after dinner talks called pep talks it's the perception of evolving physics where uh, people were not allowed to use transparencies that was the in thing at that time and uh, one had to work on blackboard and one had to essentially answer questions or moderate discussion if the speaker themselves did not know what to do so the only exception we made in pep talks of having it in daytime was uh, professor ashok sen because he was visiting for a very short time and he did not uh, have a window after dinner uh, so let let's move on to ashok's message I was shocked to hear the news of Paddy's sudden death. I cannot even imagine how difficult it is for Vasanthi and Hamsa at this time. My association with Paddy goes back to the TIFR days, but even before joining TIFR, I had heard of him through many mutual acquaintances, including my wife, who is Vasanthi's cousin. He left TIFR a few years after I joined, but our contact remained both at a personal and professional level. I still remember many lunches and dinners we had at their home at, in Ayuka, at restaurants in Cambridge, and at our home in Allahabad. Scientifically, even though our approaches were different, our goals were common, and that was to understand different aspects of gravity. So I could appreciate his deep insight and foresight into the subject. He wrote many highly influential papers, essays, books, and review articles. during his productive career he supervised many illustrious students and was a great popularizer of science even though he is no longer with us today we can take solace from the fact that his work will continue to influence us for years to come this is the best a scientist can hope for in her or his career thanks samir uh Next up is uh, Professor Rohini Godpole from uh, IIC Bangalore. Rohini. I'm not able. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. So yes, indeed, I think I just join everybody in expressing the total. disbelief uh, with which uh, i first heard the news from uh, urjit who shared it with me and actually when i heard about it i the only, the my first memory went back to paddy as the bubbling young and very sharp young person who had joined the tata institute as a student and i think it was the same year when i joined there as a uh, visiting fellow and for me paddy kandu and uh, you, you know all the other people who were mentioned were actually friends i mean we were all friends and there wasn't that much difference between a postdoc and a student in the tifr atmosphere 
and so we were all new boys together as it were and my memories really go back there and i think extraordinary abilities of paddy were apparent to all and one uh, in a no time at uh, anyway so nobody was very surprised with the very quick strides he made in the world of you know cosmology gravity i don't quite inhabit the same place but paddy of course with his keen uh, comments well, and my intellect was also very interested in quantum field theory and knew a lot of it so we used to have some interesting discussions in general and uh, uh, but i i think the, what i sort of uh, remember the last i remember was the discussions uh, we had and i think this was when he came to iisc discussions we had about uh, when he gave a colloquium on his what i call and what many others call also the emergent gravity uh but actually i think you know and also at the same time i have worked with him on some committees uh from time to time and uh, i think we even organized maybe public talk sessions at one of the indian uh, science congress uh, in uh, which happened in uh, nehu uh, but uh, more than the we had about physics the... interaction it was the really the personal interaction and of course during the days in which i was uh, ayuka on the scientific advisory council of ayuka then i went to ayuka often enough and uh, had discussions in uh, paddy's office uh, from time to time and i think the last i remember was a uh, dinner i had in their house when vasanti uh, and paddy had invited me and i think this was a really long time back when hamsa was beginning her uh, as we as it were say taking her first steps and paddy was incredibly proud of her and justly so uh, i just remember that one evening and because of his you know the great books he wrote even though i didn't work in astrophysics or cosmology actually i would direct uh, i have bought many of his books and i would direct young students who wanted to learn this subject uh, always to his books and i think the last book of his i bought was the one he wrote with uh, vasanti he used to keep on updating me very regularly whenever a new book of his came out and i think you know it's just so hard to believe that he is gone i still think that you know i would uh, uh, start a discussion and then he would again go come on rohini actually i think one of the most important and interesting things i remembered from those early days in tifr that i used to be very pleased because with, with kandu and paddy i had two more people who also could be heard outside the west canteen or east canteen just like me so i was not alone i think those days when these young people with all their enthusiasm filled us also with the same kind of enthusiasm as something that i cannot forget as uh, ashok said i also agree with him that with the legacy that he has left us in terms of his books in terms of his papers in terms of his work is something through which he will live with us but my heart really goes out to both hamsa and uh, vasanti and may god give you the strength to bear this loss which i think is really unbearable may fadi i'm sure you if i if there is any Uh, heaven or her hell or whatever if if you are in this different world i'm sure you are cracking jokes because cracking jokes was a real paddy uh, stamp so i hope may the uh, may your rest uh, may your soul rest in peace paddy thank you rohini so uh... a lot of books uh, written by paddy have been mentioned here by many of the uh, speakers so the last major project that paddy took up was uh, to write a four volume series on uh, all of physics and uh, he wanted to structure the book as uh, around lectures so essentially try out these ideas of uh, pedagogy of these topics around lectures and he was considering the possibility of stationing himself in a place where there are uh, several many undergraduate students he can interact with uh, he finally decided to stay on in ayuka and uh, visit institutes like uh, 
IIC, ISA Mohali, and ISA, uh, other uh, teaching institutions for trying out his ideas in shorter modules. Uh, next, we have a message from Professor Rajay Sood. I will uh, read it out. The untimely demise of Paddy has left us all shocked, and it is still difficult to believe that Paddy is no longer with us physically. I had the privilege to know Paddy for many years, partially because of my fascination for his passion for science, passion for taking science to public, brutally honest opinions, and exemplary clear communication of rather difficult concepts. I got to know him more closely a few years back when he was in the process of making his plans post reaching the superannuation age of 60. During one of my visits to Ayuka, to give the Institute colloquium, we took that opportunity to have long discussions about his coming to IISC. IISC did make him an offer suitable for his high stature. It was our loss in Ayuka's gain that Paddy decided to continue in Pune. I recall at this moment that Pasanti and Paddy invited me for lunch at their home in Ayuka campus. We had a lovely conversation that afternoon. Looking back, I feel that only a few days ago, uh, it seems only a few days ago that I spoke with Paddy. Quintessential, Paddy was a very kind, honest, and considerate human being, apart from being an exceptionally brilliant scientist, academician, and a teacher. We will all miss him dearly. I offer my sincere condolences, condolences to Vasanthi Hamsa and his academic family, and pray to God to give us strength to bear this loss. May his soul rest in peace. This is from uh, Professor Ajay Sood. I next request uh, Professor Varun Sahni to uh, uh, to uh, give, speak about uh, Paddy and his interactions. Varun, you are still muted. Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, yeah, now now it's fine. It's okay. Can you hear yes. me? Yes, 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 please. So you know when I first heard this news of Paddy. Passing away, I couldn't stand. I had to lean against the wall to support me because this was totally, totally bizarre and untrue. I mean, he was the world's fittest person, you know, in complete command of his life and very disciplined existence, right? You know, you know, he, you know, he, he kind of didn't dance till dawn like some of us did, right? And he, he enormous stamina, right? And and it took me several days actually to come to terms with this huge loss, right? And uh, then I started thinking. You know, how long back did I know him? And I know him from the PhD days. You see, in those days, I was doing my PhD in Moscow under Professor Zaldovich and Starobinsky. And whenever I could, I come, came to India. Their air tickets were very expensive. So I made a trip here once every two years. And I made it a point to go to all the good Indian institutions and try to give talks or at least meet people. And one of them was TIFR. And there in one office were sharing Kandu and Paddy. And these were like one of my very early friends, right? And on departing, uh, Paddy gave me a couple of his preprints. We discussed a little bit of science, right? And I was quite amazed that you see my, the topic of his research at that time, one of the topics was quantum field theory in curved space time, right? This was also the topic of my dissertation. Right? And there were only two people in the country doing this kind of work. And one was him and one was Bala Ayer, right? Two very young people, you see. And I was quite fascinated by the fact that Paddy took a lot of effort being a PhD student to learn this very complicated field on his own. And already that told me that, you know, this, this chap has enormous independence of intellect, right? And a very strong intellect. So after TIFR, I think I went to math science by train. Those days, you know, plane fares were expensive. I moved by train. And I took these lovely preprints of Bala Ayer and Paddy. And I started reading them and I really enjoyed them. I still remember reading his paper with Giant on quantization of the scale factor, right? Quantum cosmology. And told myself, well, that's a completely new way of doing things, right? So th that was how our kind of relationship began. I stayed abroad very many years, 14 years, and came back and joined Ayuka in 91. Almost a year later, I think Paddy joined. So we came in as colleagues. And again, I started marveling, you know, the enormous stamina that he had for work and his passion, which has been commented by many people, right? And his fearlessness. You see, Paddy didn't worry whether he knew a field or not. If it interested him, he plunged in. He was like one of the early explorers, like, you know, Megalon, Columbus, these people went to uncharted seas, right, on their own, right? 
and and this was very akin to my own approach to 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 science which was kind of a universal liking for all of science because you know in moscow there was the zeldovich school and the landau school and they both had a very broad view of of theoretical physics and it was very nice to see paddy having exactly that uh, you know independent large view of science no matter you know he was not very he, you know he didn't believe in narrow specialization and nor did i so we connected ideologically there and also he kind of uh, admired landau and they have landau uh, and in fact started a landau club in ayuka you know i think a decade or so ago right so you know uh, it, it it was very nice to have have a colleague uh, in the same field who is fiercely competitive and also very brilliant right uh, you know i don't know how many of you realize it but today is september the 25th 2021 what am i mentioning this date because exactly 25 years ago paddy won the bhatnagar award on this day this happens to be the birthday of shanti swarup bhatnagar wow. the year was 1996 and i remember you know i had just been in i for 5 years it was a very fledgling institution remember we lacked a little bit of confidence right our buildings were just being made we were, we were a small institute we were surrounded by enormous institutes like tifr iisc rri right you know and the fact that paddy got the bhatnagar award in 96 you know sent a beautiful message to everybody that hey guys we can also do it right you know it was a, like an i don't like an electric current it flowed through the institution right that that paddy had won the bhatnagar award i i was enormously thrilled right i congratulated him and and you know in his footsteps several of us later got the same same award and now we are a mature institution you know we feel good about ourselves we have reason to feel good about ourselves right and of course one mm -hmm. of professor narlikar's pioneer right. directorship here yeah. right. so you know the the other thing that of course everybody has mentioned is paddy's enormous incredible output right so you see he he i don't even understand how he could do it because he wrote you know so many volumes of books and he's left behind more than half a dozen books and 300 papers and apart from that he guided some very good students in fact his first student tp singh right is only 5 years younger than paddy now what that tells us is that paddy was ready to take on a phd student almost immediately after his phd that shows what an original mind he had the next student was sesh right and then he just went on and on and on so you know he's left india with a very inspiring and inspired legacy i think the new generation of cosmologists owes a lot to paddy uh, you see uh <laughs> and on a light note uh we were of course competitors in some sense but with a lot of respect for each other and uh, i remember um we once spent two or three weeks together sharing the same cottage in cambridge right? and we used to cook meals and you know hang around in the kitchen it was a common kitchen and chat about lots of things right for so chat about and one thing we realized we had in common apart from cosmology was that we both did yoga in the morning and um so i we started talking what kind of asanas you do you know so i had a week back so i did bhujang asana various asanas and i told him that i do sarvang asana right and i like it very much and he said no no i do shirshasan you know <laughs> that is even better and i could never attempt shishasan right it was it was just i i think i would have probably fallen if i had done it right so i guess all his brilliance a lot of his brilliance must have come to him from that shishasan that he did right you know early in the morning right and um, you know i i am sorely missing a colleague now because i just retired and i thought you know whenever we cross on the corridors we should exchange some pleasant anecdote and you know i saw one uh, hamsa grow up right along with bribu Lo lovely child right and i i just can't still can't believe it that such a person is no more right and uh, you know i will always treasure the fact that he was my colleague at ayuka and and he gave a lot to this institution and the country in terms of theoretical physics and and uh, you know i pray that hamsa and vasanti you know find solace and find you know strength and energy to cope this very big loss thank you thank you very much varun that was very touching uh
we uh, are all aware of uh, paris popularity among aspiring phd students in fact uh, there was a time we used to joke that everyone wants to join paddy and wants to quantize gravity preferably in 5 years uh, one of his many collaborators in the areas of semi classical and quantum gravity was professor apurva patel of the indian institute of science in bangalore i now request professor patel to uh, share his memories of paddy thank you for uh, giving me this chance to say a few things i will give some personal recollections i first ran into paddy at the theoretical high energy physics uh, scrc school in gauhati that was 1993 and uh, at that school i lectured on renormalization group uh, paddy lectured on astrophysics and we stayed ended up staying in the same small guest house for two weeks before that we had heard each other's name but never interacted in any sense but during that two weeks uh, stay together something clicked in temperamentally we are very different i am generally quiet and paddy paddy you could not keep quiet and over some evening discussions etc we developed a friendship maybe that was because of our approach to physics or maybe it was because of our approach to the life itself and that continued till now over the years we exchanged many messages paddy had a mailing list whenever he would write a paper he would send it out to some selected uh, group of his uh, contacts to get some feedback and somehow i got on to that list so he used to send me many of his papers and i would read them but i would generally not say anything in reply until paddy specifically asked me some question and then i would give my answer and that kind of continued intermittently uh, all through this uh, friendship and at some stage uh, i told him that i was a teaching assistant for kip thorn when he taught a course called applications of classical physics at caltech and he was very interested in that so i told him i have my lecture notes he said give it to me and i gave him my lecture notes now that set of notes have become a fat book uh, by the same title applications of classical physics and paddy went through the whole thing uh, step by step learning all topics which were covered inside it from relativity to fluid dynamics to statistical physics and even thermodynamics etc etc but that was the zeal uh, that paddy had to learn all kinds of things from all kinds of sources and uh, roughly around the same time i started getting interested in quantum computation and uh, i developed a theory relating uh, grover's algorithm to genetic code and it was completely off the beaten track and paddy became very much interested in that probably because it was off the beaten track and he used to ask me every time we met what is the progress in that theory so the theory is in much better shape but it's still not a stage where a biologist can confirm it so paddy say to me write a book write a book and uh, he also gave me advice about how to write a book he said you have to write every 10 pages every day i could not uh, manage to do that i only ended up writing a review article and uh, that is uh, what uh, is the present status at the same time roughly uh, we also collaborated on understanding black hole physics in a language of inductive theory where we wanted to develop a semi classical quantization in the effective theory language we got some results 
but somehow the punchline was missing. And so could never convince the referee to accept it for publication. The papers remained on the archive. But afterwards, Paddy did write a review article and he included all the results in that uh, review article. So that is the physics part of our interaction. But we also developed a friendship on the family side that I visited a few times his home in Ayuka and he visited my home several times when he came to Bangalore and uh, we would interact on things which are not necessarily physics. So my wife is a doctor and uh, Pelly somehow didn't like uh, visiting doctors. Maybe because he considered doctor's knowledge to be all empirical, not rigorous enough for him. But somehow he had no problem or he was very happy eating food that was cooked by a doctor. And like a good South Indian, at the end of every meal, he wanted curd rice. Even if the food was a Gujarati meal, he wanted curd rice. So we provided him that. And we had many discussions about medical field in contrasting that with physics. Our son is a little bit younger than Hansa. So there was also a discussion about children and what they are doing. So Paddy used to give some puzzles to my son. And uh, then he would observe the line of thinking. And uh, he was mischievous. So if he saw that the problem is going to get solved by this line of thinking, he will deliberately intervene and give some misleading information. And well, that was a nice try. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't, but that was a lot of fun and it also showed the kind of joy he had in uh, exploring new things. In the similar uh, period, Hansa participated in uh, the Intel uh, Science Fair and won a prize. And that became a motivation for my son also to try it next year. And he also won a prize in the Intel Science Fair. So we had a discussion about how our children uh, are doing in school and where they should go and what kind of uh, subjects they should pursue. And I think that also influenced to some extent their uh, future career. So these are some of the topics. Our other physics exchanges uh, continued till last year when COVID basically disrupted everything. And uh, that was the last communication uh, I had before uh, this. And then this news of his passing away was unanticipated. I have actually one request for Vasanti and Hansa that knowing Paddy, there would be lots of things which he has left unfinished. And both of them have access as well as the expertise to understand the subject of what those unfinished things are. And my request is try to finish some of those things as well as you can. And uh, if you need help, we will get it. But the point is passing on the knowledge to the next generation is the best legacy anybody can have. The knowledge may be as anonymous as the DNA we inherited from our ancestors, but it is the true legacy of life itself. And that is the reason behind this request of mine Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Apurva. Uh, actually, many may remember uh, Paddy was the chair of the local organizing committee, the LOC of the ASI meeting hosted by Ayuka in 2002. Uh, as the chair, 
he asked me and another student of ayuka anand sen gupta to kind of design the meeting website and also the registration form and those days managing online registrations was not uh, that common in fact we were not very sure whether we will be able to get it ready but paddy was confident in fact he was with us throughout uh, giving suggestions on how to solve the tricky issues uh, related to the software and it worked out finally uh, this was typical paddy uh, he was always eager to use like cutting edge tools for efficiency he was never shy of uh, taking risks calculated risks and never hesitant in letting students or junior collaborators take up challenging problems uh i now request uh, professor gc anupama from indian institute of astrophysics bangalore who is also currently the president of the asi to share her thoughts thank you uh it um it was indeed a very um you know sad news and i was deeply shocked when i got to hear about paddy's um, untimely demise i uh, recall that i first met uh, paddy when i was a postdoc at ayuka in 1992 he had not yet uh, joined ayuka then but he was um, he visited ayuka as a member of the student uh, selection committee and uh, you know i was introduced to him when he had just come out of uh, um, the committee finishing the in finishing interviewing the vsrp students and when i was introduced to him his reaction was oh so you're the one who guided the observational project now having heard a lot about you know paddy and how critical he could be i was naturally very diffident but what followed that statement were words of appreciation for the project and also the information that the student had been pre selected for the ayuka phd program i was naturally very uh, elated later on after paddy joined ayuka i had a lot of um, interaction with him i recall the you know great conversations that uh, we used to have science and otherwise mostly otherwise and you know the science one may wonder what common science we could uh, discuss but the science was mostly um, observational astronomy because paddy was interested in observational cosmology and i think it was during the days when there were very few people of probably none in the country uh, doing observational uh, cosmology and not to forget the excellent food that you know one always got when one went to his uh, place paddy was also an excellent mentor and i remember discussing a decision i had uh, taken that i was a little unsure about and after having the discussions with him i felt a lot confident about the decision i taken <clears throat> he was an inspiration and he'll continue to be an inspiration to the future generation so on my behalf and on behalf of the entire um, astronomical society of india i convey my uh, deep condolences to lasant and hansa and i pray that uh, that is soul rest in peace thank you very much anupama so we still have about uh, 18 uh, presentations left so i would uh, request the speakers to try to be brief uh, as much as possible uh, i now request professor kp singh who is a visiting professor at isar mohali to say a few words on his association with paddy Uh, thank you uh, for giving this chance. Uh, it was indeed a shock when I heard the news from Balvinder about uh, Paddy's untimely demise. As has already been said, he was a great astrophysicist uh, who, you know, uh, <clears throat> lived among us, accomplished a lot, and inspired many others. He was a great friend and a colleague uh, at TFR. He always invited me to conferences conferences that he held at Orange County near Mysore, and whenever he wanted to hear about some observational aspects and so on, 
He will always remain the shining star of the TFA Graduate School Program, probably uh, unparalleled uh, accomplishments uh, in the TFA school. Uh, his straightforward and no-nonsense manner was actually quite endearing. And, uh, but to be brief, I just say that as I mourn his loss, my heart goes out to Vasanti and Hansa. I wish them all the strength to bear this loss. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, KP. Um, we have uh, already heard quite a bit about Paddy's close connections with NCRA, the institute where I work. Uh, in fact, Asim talked about his participation in many of the joint admission programs the two institutes run. Just this morning, I was discussing uh, with Gulab the teaching assignments for the IUCA NCRA graduate school for the upcoming academic year. And it suddenly hit me that Paddy won't be teaching this time. I mean, whenever there was a course where we did not find anyone to teach, uh, Paddy was the one person we could uh, rely on to teach that. In fact, personally, I would always go to him asking for like suggestions and help whenever I had to teach a course. And this is something I and I'm, I believe many of us uh, will miss. So uh, I now request uh, Professor uh, Jairam Chengalur, uh, who is the Dean of the NCRA uh, faculty to share his thoughts uh, on Paddy. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Thirth. Um, <clears throat> so I, I first met Paddy, you know, very shortly after I moved to NCRA in 1996. And in fact, he was one of the first people at Ayuka who I met. And uh, this was really because, and I think I'm not alone, uh, you know, in this, um, that he took the trouble you know, to befriend me, to take an interest in my work and, you know, to chat to me. And I think this is, uh, you know, even though my work has actually, is actually by and large quite far uh, from the sort of things that Paddy himself works on. And, uh, you know, for me, this has been the pattern throughout, you know, Paddy always taking the initiative to keep in touch, um, you know, always sort of uh, interested when we meet um, in chatting about my work and, uh, you know, a whole lot more. Um, and as others have mentioned before, uh, he's also been a very good friend uh, to NCRA, both as a chair of the JMRT Time Allocation Committee, as well as a member of the NCRA Management Board. We could always count on Paddy, uh, you know, to keep us grounded, uh, to call a spade a spade. But we could also count on him, uh, you know, to, to, to provide support, uh, you know, whenever there, whenever there was some administrative difficulty. Uh, in getting the best science out of the GMRT. It was a shock, um, you know, to have Paddy pass away so suddenly. It's a great loss uh, to us all, as well as to the global scientific community. My deepest condolences to Vasanti, uh, Hamsa, and all of our colleagues uh, at Ayuka. Thank you. Thank you, Jairam. Um, <clears throat> we now move on to uh, Professor Lee Smolin, who is uh, a co-traveler of Paddy in his uh, theoretical astrophysics uh, uh, and theoretical physics uh, travels. Uh, professor Lee Smolin is uh, a professor at Perimeter Institute and also uh, uh, associated with uh, many other institutions. So, this uh, uh, morning, please. Thank you very much. Um, I didn't know Paddy well, and I was not a close friend of his. Although I always felt when we, the few times we met, that there was a great potential for friendship. And I speak sadly of his loss in that sense. Um, I'm going to be very, very short. There was an idea that I had, which I'm not going to tell you what it is, but that was one of the crazier, most ambitious ideas I had. And what Patty and I had together when we met in Princeton the first time is the same idea. And there was a wonderful moment. I wonder if you've ever had it with anybody in which you look at each other and you say, We've asked the same question. And that question, which I'm not going to name, was central for much of the thinking that he and I 
did on our separate paths in the years since. Now, um, I think he was a, a very interesting, very creative, very sincere and ambitious scientist. And I was happy to, in that secret way, share an idea with him. So thank you very much. And all the best condolences to the people who were his friends and family. Thank you, Professor Spallin. We now switch gears a little bit and um, give chance to some of his students to speak up. Uh, people mentioned that Paddy um, appeared at Ayuka, started appearing at Ayuka in the 1992 time frame. And I also moved to Ayuka as a graduate student in 1992 and has been um, knowing him for the last 29 years, almost three decades. Paddy used to be very, very friendly with students. Every time he used to get one of his numerous awards, recognitions, he used to call us around, give parties, or take us out for dinner. We used to have very interesting conversations. People have mentioned how Paddy used to love food, South Indian food, especially rice and so on. Um, once he took a fancy to have uh, one of these Malayalam Malayali food called butter with a very, very special cooked rice cake um, in a uh, particular part of Kera, India from which it comes. And he wanted to have that and he could do it. And I said, I can. And then he let, he, he let me lose in this kitchen. I, I'm sure I wasn't just dismayed. Uh, but I did that. But anyway, he probably ended up all right. So, but he had a um, lot of very interesting experiences with the students. So, let's start first with uh, Professor T.P. Singh, uh, who was one of his, who was his first PhD student. Uh, T. P. Can you unmute? You have unmuted, but we cannot hear you. We cannot hear you, TP. Hello. Hello. Whom are you waiting for? Uh, Professor T.P. Singh, the Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Thank you. This is a short letter written to Paddy today. I imagine that he's listening to us at this very moment. Dear Paddy, on the 17th of September, around 11 a.m., Professor Seshadri phoned in to say that you have left us. Since then, these nine days have been days of grief, disbelief, and memories. When I go to the office, I walk past the office room you used to occupy in TIFR. When I look out from the window of my house, I see the house you lived in during TIFR days. Your home was Gurukulam, and you and Vasanti and your parents treated us students as your family members. Happy times were spent playing with Hamsa when she was just a year old. Our deepest condolences to Vasanti and Hamsa were themselves dear family friends to my wife Jyoti and me since our TIFR days together. Paddy, on the physics front, when I examine my current research on quantum gravity, I see your imprint all over. 
During 1984 to 1989, you were my PhD supervisor, along with Seshadri and Urjit Yagnik, who was your first postdoc. We had a small but intense and close-knit group. Since you were only five years older than me, you were also a close friend. We spent an endless number of hours together doing research, discussing a large variety of problems in theoretical physics, and discussing matters of life in general. The following are the three most important physics lessons that you taught me. One, physics should be done for the joy of doing physics, not for building a career. Two, on any given physics problem, one should develop one's own original line of thinking. Three, one should become a broad gauge physicist and not just continue working on a narrow topic. On a narrow topic. After you left for Ayuka, our interaction reduced, but you had already done the crucial molding that shapes a student into a scientist. At Ayuka, you did your great work on gravity as thermodynamics, which will decidedly leave its mark on the final theory of quantum gravity as and when the final theory comes. Paddy, you leave behind a gharana of some 30 former PhD students and postdocs who have had their own students. Also, Vasanti and Hamsa are a part of this academic gharana. It is our solemn promise that we'll take your scientific legacy forward and strive to achieve the high and exacting standards you have set for us. You may have left us, but we'll not let go of you. Your books, research articles, and video recordings of your lectures are with us. If we have a question for you, we look up the monumental works you have left behind us. You have inspired thousands of college students who have in the last few days expressed their condolences and respect and admiration for you. It is our wish and hope that we'll be able to set up a Thanu Padmanabhan Center for Gravitational Physics. At this center, your gharana will work to train these upcoming youngsters and in so doing, everlastingly keep you in our memories. That is a promise, Paddy. We'll never forget you. Your life was short, but it was extraordinary. Trivendra, Mumbai, Pune, and now a bright star in the sky. We feel your light, Parry. Keep shining in us, my teacher, my, my friend. Thank you, Professor Singh. Uh, for that message from your heart. We move on to his next student, who is Tia uh, Sheshadri, um, to tell us about uh, his experience with Paddy. Shesh. Uh, thank you. Uh, I have known Paddy from 1983, when I joined TFR for my PhD. He had become a faculty member at TFR in 1980, less than a year after he joined for PhD in 1979. We used to chat very often over coffee or lunch in West Canteen or at his home. In one such chat, it occurred to both of us that I could register with him for PhD and then and hence, I had the fortune of being his first student. Unless my memory is failing, I thought it was about six months before PPC. He was more of a friend rather than a supervisor. He, Vasanti, and his parents treated me as a part of their family. His parents treated me just like their son. In fact, I remember if any, any nice dish was prepared in their house, a part of it used to be kept separately for me and a message will be sent through Paddy to come at lunchtime and have. Paddy's interests were varied. Anything which involved intellectual pursuit would interest him. He tried to get me too interested in these. Some I did 
and some I was incapable to do so, chess being an example of the latter. He gave me the confidence to stand on my own and swim against the stream when I needed to. His approach to doing physics influenced anyone who came in contact with him, and it was very much so in my case too. He had a very significant role in whatever little I have achieved in my academic life. Once he asked me over dinner if I like history, I gave what I thought was a very careful answer. I said, I didn't like history the way it was taught in school. He immediately asked me if I liked physics the way it was taught in school. I said, no. Then he said, how come you like physics? Now, this was a very significant event because this taught me that if circumstances are not favorable, one need to find a path oneself. And this attitude was reflected in the line from Upanishad, which he often quoted, don't look for paths, O traveler, paths are made by walking. A banyan tree drops roots, which it nurtures and enables them to survive on their own long after the tree is gone. Paddy is not with us physically anymore, but we hope to continue the legacy he left behind. That will be the greatest tribute we can pay to him. Such an untimely departure would be terrible for Hamsa as well as Vasanti, who has been a pillar of strength for him. May God give him mental strength to face the situation. May his soul find peace at the feet of God. Thank you. Thank you, Shish. Sorry, there is a speaker in between. Uh, let me complete that. Uh, thank you, Shesh. Um, we now uh, would like to hear from Professor Chai, who is a professor at Institute of Theoretical Physics at the Chinese Academy of Science, and uh, uh, again, a co-traveler of Paddy in his uh, scientific ventures. Professor Chai. Hello, can you hear me? Very well. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Rongken Chai. I am professor and the director of the Institute of Theoretical Physics, Chinese Academy of Science. On last Friday, I got a message from Dr. Savedi Koleka, who is a former student of Paddy. I was deeply saddened by the news of the untimely demise of the Paddy due to the heart attack. Thanks to the director of Yuka for the invitation for this memorial meeting. Paddy is one of my best friends. Please pass my condolence to the Paddy's wife and daughter. Paddy is a well-known theoretical physics, made great contributions to the many important topics in general relativity, cosmology, and the quantum field theories in covered space-time. He received many national and international honors awards. In addition, he had a very important influence on students and the young researchers through his excellent lectures, reviews, articles, and books. He trained many young people, including me, through his research papers, review articles, and books. I got to know Paddy through his work and our common interest in research. In the traditional point of view, gravity is a fundamental interaction. However, the nature of gravity is still a question to be answered. The black hole thermodynamics found by Stephen Hawking, Jacob Bagenstein, and others in the 1970s reveals that there might be an essential connection between the gravity dynamic and the thermodynamics. The geometric features of the black hole temperature and the entropy lead one to conjecture that gravity might be the emergent phenomenon and is a coarse grain description of some under, underlying microscopic degrees of freedom. In fact, this idea was first proposed by Shahalouf in 1967 before black hole 
thermodynamics was set up. According to Sakharov's space-time background, emergence as a mean field approximation of the underlying microscopic degrees of freedom, similar to, as to the hydrodynamics or continued elastic series from molecular physics. In this field, Paddy made a great contribution to review the holog holographic properties of the gravity and to the nature from the thermodynamics aspects. In 2005, I and my collaborator wrote a paper, which get a Friedman equations by applying the first law of thermodynamics to the apparent horizon of a friedman robertson walker universe. Later on, my group investigated various connections between the gravity dynamics and the thermodynamics. Just because of this, I was invited by Paddy to have attended the seventh international conference on gravitation and cosmology, which was held in Goa in December 2011. On that conference, I finally met Paddy and also many Indian physicists. Since then, we often come in communicated through emails. When Paddy has a new paper, he always sent to me for reading and the comments. Also just five years ago, I wrote a short article in the book, Fundamental Theoretical Physics, to celebrate Paddy's 60th birthday. Paddy is always very kind and helped me in various aspects. For example, he's kind to write a recommendation later to regularly recommend me as a twice member. In 2016, we built the BRICS Association of the Gravitation, Astrophysics, and Cosmology. Paddy helped a lot for this association and served as the first chairman of the advice board of the association. Over the past years, I have invited Paddy several times for visiting China. Unfortunately, so far it was not made now it becomes a regret for me. Today, we hold this memorial meeting of Paddy as a scientist. To remember Paddy him, I think it might be the best way to pursue Paddy's path and the source to seek the nature of the gravity and to find out the truth of the origin and the evolution of the universe. Let's work more hard together. Paddy, we will miss you forever. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Professor Kai. It must be very uh, late for you. Uh, uh, we'll now uh, hear from uh, Paddy's uh, another uh, uh, PhD student, uh, Professor Sriram Kumar, who is now a professor at the uh, IIT uh, Madras. Thank you, Sanjeev. Uh, Paddy was an intellectual giant, and I'm sure each of his students have their own versions of experiences with him much like the blind man and the elephant. I should thank the organizers as well as the fellow students of Paddy for being given the opportunity to speak at this meeting and share my thoughts and memories. The sudden demise of Paddy has been devastating loss. Paddy, Vasanthi and Hamsa have always made us feel that we are part of their family. To me, Paddy's passing away is like losing a parent. He's irre irreplaceable. I'll share three distinct memories of Paddy. I should consider myself fortunate to have known Paddy and have had the access to him. The access was simultaneously beneficial and challenging, as many people have pointed out. Beneficial for reasons that it has helped me raise my own levels and challenging for the reason that Paddy was difficult to keep up pace with. I will highlight a challenge and benefit when I joined Paddy to pursue my PhD, he had given a list of problems in those days. You know, he used to handwrite those problems and give them. And I could solve a set of those problems and the remaining set I couldn't do. And I'd gone back to Paddy saying that, look, I couldn't solve these problems. Paddy himself had solved the original set and he hadn't attempted. I guess if he had attempted, he would have solved them as well. And uh, uh, so I told him, Paddy, I'm not able to solve these problems. Can you give me a problem that I can solve? To which Paddy, in his typical said, in his typical style, said, "If I have a if if I have a problem and I can solve it, why should I give it to you?" I have always considered Paddy's stand as fair. Let me now point out the benefit of working with Paddy. I was writing my first paper, and in the context of uh, something known as the Andrew effect, 
uh, which Paddy has extensively worked on. And I was examining the response of so-called detectors. And I was encountering certain divergences in certain situations. And I couldn't understand what it was, why these divergences arise. They should not have arisen. And uh, there were discussions uh, uh, in the literature pointing out you have to regularize them. It seemed unnecessary. And I remember going to Paddy and discussing with him. I'd finished all the remaining tasks about the, about the paper barring this particular thing. And Paddy, again, you know, within a matter of minutes, he could you know, provide a clear, simple proof as to why divergences arise in uh, certain situations and it doesn't arise in other situations. And uh, it was Paddy who introduced us to Landau Lifshitz. Uh, when I was a student, we used to have regular meetings at Ayuka to and discuss various chapters from various textbooks of Landau Lifshitz, Jasjeet and Ram Prakash, for instance, would remember these meetings. Uh, Warren Sani had also mentioned about it. For his students, you know, I believe it sent the standard of Paddy's expectations. I also believe that it was Landau Lifshitz series that inspired Paddy to write the three volume set of books on theoretical astrophysics. And also as Rajaram Nityananda mentioned, Paddy read widely, and it was he who introduced me to gems such as Gorbidal's creation. I should also mention that Paddy deeply cared for students and teaching of physics. I believe that that is one of the reasons he was keen on writing textbooks. About two weeks ago, we had a general body meeting of the Indian Association for General Relativity and Gravitation. And one of the items on the agenda was making GR lectures, lectures uh, you know, which are available online, you know, combine them together and make it accessible at a given place. Paddy had tried calling me, but I couldn't attend his call and the meeting had concluded by then. And uh, I spoke to him and he said, look, GRG should not, I am sorry, IAGRG should not try to limit the courses that are available. And in fact, you know, facilitate access to all the Courses, and he had said, let a thousand flowers bloom. And in fact, that is what we had converged on in the, IA, in the general body meeting as well. Paddy was one who made impatience a virtue. As he has written in the preface of his three volumes, preface to his three volumes in astrophysics, he wished to cover as much area as possible within a rather short span of time, much in the manner of Genghis Khan. Unfortunately for us, he seems to have exhibited the same impatience in his final moments too. Paddy's loss leaves behind a huge void in our students, in his students' lives and many others, I'm sure. It'll take us quite a while to come to terms with it. He will remain in our memories forever. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you, Sanjeev. Thanks, Riyam. Thanks for the message. It clearly shows how caring Paddy was for his uh, students. We'll now uh, hear from uh, uh, one of Paddy's uh, uh, youngest uh, uh, student uh, at Ayuka, uh, Karthik uh, Rajiv. Karthik, can you please uh, unmute? Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Sanjay. Uh, I met Paddy for the first time uh, in the year 2014. I was visiting Ayuka. Uh, I was visiting Ayuka uh, to work under him as a summer project student. I still remember uh, how nervous I was uh, when I first knocked on his door that day. Uh, to be honest, I was uh, for some reason expecting a monster. But to my surprise, I saw a very friendly person uh, greeting me uh, with a pleasant smile. The interactions that I had uh, have had since uh, then would influence the way I approach physics as well as life in general. Uh, the academic as well as the non-academic community around the world has benefited hugely from his uh, great passion for physics, the exceptionally systematic manner in which he did research, the numerous articles and books that he has uh, written, and the engaging public talks that he has uh, delivered. I recall on the day Paddy accepted me as uh, his graduate student, he told me that I could call him any day, any time uh, to discuss physics. Uh, later on, however, I came to realize that this actually worked both ways. Uh, I could expect a call from him any time, any day. To be frank, it was uh, difficult for me to keep up with his pace because a, a lot of information would have been conveyed even in a short phone call. 
Hence, uh, with his permission, sometimes I would record the calls on my phone. Uh, later, Paddy himself would often suggest that I can uh, record some of uh, our face-to-face -face conversations, which included his uh, feedbacks on my thesis, some of my presentations, and so on. I still have all those uh, recordings, uh, which, which, which I shall preserve forever uh, as uh, my most valuable treasure. Now, even though Paddy and I come from the same region of the country, uh, namely Kerala, uh, he never spoke in the vernacular when we were discussing physics. However, sometimes when I goof up some calculations on the board uh, in his office, he would suddenly switch to Malayalam briefly and say something uh, proverbial to just uh, uh, pull my leg. He had a very noticeable trivandrum accent and a very characteristic uh, Madhu uh, sense of wit. Oftentimes, I did not even get uh, his uh, proverb uh, references exactly, but whenever he switches to Malayalam, uh, I knew I had uh, goofed up somewhere and I would suddenly become more alert. But his uh, reputation for being uncompromising in matters of quality is, uh, of course, very well known. Excellence is not negotiable, according to him. And of course, this nature of his sometimes translates to an, an exhausting experience uh, for his student, including him. But he was a very, he was very considerate of his students. I remember at one point uh, during my PhD, I was uh, going through some tough uh, personal problems. And Patty had actually sensed uh, the same, and he convinced me to take a long vacation to sort things out and, and not to worry about uh, my PhD during that time. I, I took his advice and, and that decision proved to be a very uh, constructive one for my career. And I'm forever indebted to him for his uh, uh, kind gesture. Paddy was not just a good supervisor, but a, a, a guru of the superlative kind, the very good friend. Uh, I shall now conclude with a message passed on to me from two of my teachers in ISA, Professor Shankaranarayan and Professor Archana Pai. A noble heart has stopped beating. However, the mind that has touched many lives will live on for the generations to come. Unquote. Let me also take this uh, opportunity to convey my heartfelt condolences to the family members. Thank you. Thanks, Kartik. Uh, you, you have heard uh, from uh, Paddy's uh, uh, several uh, PhD students. Uh, I would like to share my experience also. I did my PhD in gravitational waves by I, actually in my first year, I uh, uh, did two projects with Paddy involving gravitation and quantum physics. And then uh, I came he, in Ayuka for, for a summer school in 2000. At that time, I started a project with Paddy. So, you know, at that time, Paddy was the dean of code academic programs and also uh, writing those uh, volumes in astrophysics. But whenever I had any problem, I could knock his door and enter and talk to him. Even though I was not a PhD student at IUCA at that time, I'm just an MSc student attending a summer school. And it was quite impressive. He never said he's busy. He was very brief to the point, but answered all my queries and with and properly going to the board and explaining everything. I was really, really impressed. And I wish I can do this with the summer students or other students who come to visit us here, because you know, oftentimes we get uh, really jittery with a lot of pressure of work and so on. You really have to have very good processing unit in your head in order to stay calm and answer everything. Okay, next. Uh, 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 we will uh, invite, uh, uh, we would like to play uh, a message from our uh, senior uh, administrative officer, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Abhankar. Uh, Samir, uh, could you please, yeah. I have known Professor Padmanabhan since January 93, when he joined Ayuka during its inception stage. I was deeply shocked to hear of his untimely demise on 17th of September 21. He was a distinguished professor of Ayuka and was very active faculty member too. 
Apart from his valuable scientific contributions and various awards, including Padma Shri, he was a guiding factor for all of us after he became Dean Core Academic Program. And his contribution in the various administrative committees was remarkable and guiding factor for all administrative officers. I have a lot of memories about our discussion on income tax matters, income tax provisions after every finance budget. Very recently, we had started to discuss on retirement benefits and investment opportunities after considering provisions of income tax. We shared our ideas on investment opportunities and we had actually planned another meeting in the month of October 21 to discuss this matter. However, this could not materialize. Now that remains outstanding forever. My sincere condolences to Professor Panmanabhan's family member. I used to used to get stuck. Our work was to stall because, like, we were discussing for half an hour, and those were really memorable uh, moments for me. Uh, and then many times we used to talk over phone also. Uh, okay, without taking more time, uh, I would uh, now play uh, a video by uh, uh, Dr. Uh, V. Chellathurai, who was the coordinator of the core academic program when Paddy was the dean of uh, core academic uh, programs. Uh, Samir, if you can let us sad occasion, very sad to give occasion tribute to, to give tribute to Professor Padmanabhan. I know him for a long time, say, from the inception of Ayuka. When he landed in Pune Station by the Kankun from TA for Mumbai, I was there to receive him. So he was the first, I was the first person he met from Ayuka on that occasion. His parents were also there. His parents were very happy when I talked to them in their language, Tamil. And after that, he settled down in Agashanga colony. So we were his neighbors. His parents used to visit us and they were happy to talk to us in Tamil and then in Malayalam. So it was, they were very friendly. When he was the dean of core academic program in Ayuka, I was the coordinator. He was the convener for the academic programs committee. He asked me to attend all the APC meetings and record the proceedings. I used to make minutes. He was very particular about the policies he make. Say during the initial time, there were no policies like purchase policies, 
selection policies, recruitment, promotion, all these policies were not formatted. Professor Padmanabhan was the architect of most of the policies. He was a quick decision maker. Whatever we give to him for seeing or for reading, he used to do it immediately and return it. He was very meticulous in his dealings. When we visit his office, the room was very clean and his table was arranged in a very systematic manner, very meticulous. He remembers most of the policies made by the APC committee. Similarly, his lectures, I used to attend some of his lectures. He was very methodical and systematic. It was very nice to hear him talking without any giving lectures, without any notes. I learned a lot from him as a college teacher. He used to finish his lectures on time. Everything perfectly done. Also, when he selected a student or postdoc, he was very selective. He used to select very bright students and he used to guide them. Whenever the students ask for any appointment to discuss research papers, research matters, he was very well ready to give the time. He was very intellectual. I can say, say, I have not seen such a person with that much of integrity and intellectual capability. When I was preparing his documents for his various promotions and extensions, I used to collect the list of awards. So when I collect, if you make all these lists, it may go beyond pages. So it is very sad to know he is no more. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was such a uh, heartfelt uh, message from uh, Chella Thurai, who has worked so uh, long with him, uh, with Paddy, during his uh, time as Dean of uh, Academic Programs at Ayuka. Uh, I uh, am uh, now playing a double role of uh, both uh, taking these proceedings forward a little bit and also playing the messages. So please excuse uh, pause or so. But this uh, just reminds me of all the double roles that Paddy could play and, and many multiple roles in fact, and we've been all reminded through many memories. And not just that, I, you know, as a, as a student during my summer school time and uh, many other short lectures that I've attended uh, and, and seen him work on the board, there's this amazing uh, feat that he could achieve, you know, being ambidextrous he would actually start writing with his left hand from the left edge of the board. He comes here <laughs> close to his nose and then starts writing, uh, takes the chalk in his right hand and continues. That's, uh, I mean, that's, that's something we would wait for in a talk. Not, of course, we would uh, see the content of it and, and marvel at it, but uh, this, this was something, some unique characteristics that we have seen with Paddy. Uh, of course, uh, and I, I work in outreach and we've worked with, on a few projects in outreach. 
And uh, I see him that he was this, uh, you know, other than being the pinnacle of excellence at work, he also had so much positivity uh, in himself and to share. Uh, when I was a junior at Ayuka, just, you know, in the company of such big personalities here, he sensed that I was feeling a bit unconfident. So uh, he just called me aside one day and uh, while working on some diary which we were doing. And he says, uh, see, I, I can feel that uh, you, you're feeling uncomfortable, but uh, don't be uh, afraid or don't be, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, intimidated or at all. Uh, the most important thing is that you should be informed and value others, but most definitely value yourself. And so that is uh, something, uh, teaching that I've carried on uh, in my whole life. And uh, it's thanks to Paddy and some of his encouragement that uh, today uh, we are able to do such great work. Of course, uh, Ayuka Outreach is well known for uh, these great stalwarts who uh, took it to such levels where it's recognized as one of the most popular institutes in India, and not just in astronomy, but all in all of science. So uh, it's, it's been a pleasure and a very big honor to have worked with such a great person. Now, uh, it's also my pleasure to uh, also introduce uh, and uh, bring to you two special people who worked in outreach and with Paddy. So I begin with uh, Mr. Arvind Gupta, who uh, is in charge of Padmashri and he worked uh, at the Ayuka Science Center for, uh, for more than a decade and had a lot of association with uh, Paddy. So I'll play a recorded message from him. Just uh, please. Okay. Well, I knew Paddy much before I met him. He used to contribute an article for the Science Today, which was brought up by the Times of India group. He used to contribute play themes. It was recreational mathematics, a puzzle every month from 85 to 89 for four years. And I, I was a regular reader of that column. Later, Paddy started writing for the Science Age. And he used to contribute two pages to a cartoon book called as the story of physics. Now this is the story of physics. It was illustrated by Keith Francis and this column continued for two years. That's the same time when I was invited to write a column by Suryabh Chan in Science Age and it was titled Little Science. And uh, very, very, I used to love the story of physics because that made physics much more interesting in a very cartoon form. It was a comic book. It was in the year 2000 that Ayuka invited me to deliver the National Science Day Lecture. And uh, when I went to Ayuka, I saw the Rogues Gallery, which is a who's who of all the scientists who work there, and I saw Paddy's name. And I said, this was a good time to get in, to meet him. So I knocked at his door, and I said that I was Arvind Gupta. Well, he, he read my article and I read his column and then I said that I would, uh, do you have all those 24 issues of Science Age? And he pulled out a Xerox copy of the story of physics. And I said, I would very much like to translate it. The book was in color and we were not able to print this in color. So my friend, Avinash Deshpande from the JJ School of Arts, he converted them into line drawings. I translated them into Hindi and this was published by Vigyan Prasad. And it was very, very unprecedented success. On the internet, it was downloaded 11,000 times and several editions of the story of physics in Hindi ran out. Paddy was very happy with this and he then gave me permission that uh, I could get this translated to other Indian languages. So using my contacts, I was able to get the story of physics to seven Indian languages, which is all the four South Indian languages, Malayalam, Tamil, Kannada, and Telugu, Hindi, I did, then in Marathi and Gujarati. This so we had uh, also, of course, uh, Paddy contributing so much to science popularization and to taking 
uh, all the complex things that he uh, you know could so easily talk about but also to take them into uh, the into schools into people's hands through very popular books and that's one of the aspects of him that we also would, uh, wanted to highlight and uh, it's, it's, I think, <laughs> no, none better than uh, Arvind Paranspe to uh, talk more about uh, what Paddy, uh, you know, how, how Paddy uh, did this and, of course, uh, other good stories. Uh, Thank you so much, Samir, for inviting me. Uh, you can hear me, I suppose. Yes, we can. Uh, yeah. See, my, my sentiments are not very different from the others who spoke uh, before me about Paddy. Uh, I had a, a fairly long association with him after he joined the Committee for Public Outreach Program of IUCA, of which I was in charge from as the very first meeting till I left for Mumbai to join Nehru Planetarium just about 10 years ago. But my interaction with Paddy continued. Uh, like everyone here, I will also miss him very much. Uh, may I share some of my recollections of my interaction with Paddy? Something that was not said about him was his interest in stamp collection. He was quite thankful when I had given him the first day cover of the commemorative stamp of MN Saha, which was at, uh, it was uh, franked at Ayuka when Ayuka uh, dedicated one of the roads of the university and Ayuka dedicated one of the roads to uh, MN Saha. Uh, I was one of the first few few who got the copy of his excellent book the story of physics, which he himself sent to me. And then I wrote a review for Amazon India and which he approved. So I had sent my note to him and uh, he approved that note. And during this period of uh, his joining uh, the public outreach program, the over a period of time, I had kind of become his uh, press uh, attache. Just last month, uh, exactly one month ago on 17th of uh, August, uh, the one month ago in the sense that when he died, uh, he called me to say that Kerala Shastra Puruskaram has announced a lifetime achievement award for him. And then he had left it to me when to send the press note, etc. Uh, about him, I can say that of all the people, uh, particularly non-observational astronomers, he understood amateur astronomy the best. In, nine, in 2001, uh, I went to him to get uh, permission or approval for a mission to observe an occultation of a star by an asteroid that was going to take place on 1st of March 2001. Um, and it would be seen from, or it was seen from a place called Ganesh Gudi, uh, which is at the Maharashtra Karnataka border in Karnataka without asking question after reading my proposal, without asking my any question, uh, he simply uh, approved my travel and eventually that was published as a paper. The observations were published. Uh, to me, as you yourself know, Samir, that uh, one of the most important support from Paddy that uh, we got was the mobile planetarium. I was asking Ayuka for some time that we should have a mobile planetarium. And when he was there in the committee, he saw that not one, but we got two mobile planetaria. And uh, outreach at Ayuka had been always short of people. So at that time, I had devised a system of teaching teachers how to use the planetarium. And idea was that teachers would come and take away the planetarium at their place, show it to uh, their child uh, school students, and bring it back to us. But what was more important in this case was that he said, that let these planetariums be used as much as possible. And if there are wear and tear, okay, we will take care of it. I will give you the money to repair the planetarium. That was really great help because that is how the planetaria went many places, not just in uh, Pune, but uh, in places in Maharashtra. 
I was also a witness to many of his public lectures at Ayuka and later on at Nehru Planetarium. And one of the things that we will be missing from Paddy is that he wanted to deliver a lecture which he had prepared. And I think he had also written an article about it, is about the story of calendar. Uh, he, he was quite passionate about uh, delivering this lecture at Nehru Planetarium. And because of pandemic, we could not invite him. Then I must also add that in April 2015, Hamsa delivered an excellent lecture, public lecture at the planetarium. And many of our regular visitors to the planetarium, they still remember and say that, uh, invite her again. So uh, after that talk, when I uh, went to Pune and told Paddy that uh, her lecture was a bit better than his, so verbally, he expressed something very similar to what Ramki had said, but there was unmistakable gleam in his eyes. He certainly did enjoy his daughter uh, doing better. Uh, I would also like to, uh, I would like to end this by saying that uh, with Vasanti, I'm sure Hamsa will carry uh, along with his other student, his legacy forward. And I hope either Vasanti or Hamsa that you would come to Mumbai and delivered that sp very special uh, uh, lecture on story of calendars, uh, calendar at uh, planetarium sometime in future. Take care and thank you very much. Thank you so much, Arvind. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's such a touching occasion where we are remembering all the contributions he's done and then and wherever we look, it's, it's there, Paddy's there, and he has helped people, uh, helped departments in Ayuka, helped people personally also to grow uh, and, and become much better than what they think they can be. So uh, that's uh, that brings me to uh, another funny thing that, that I noticed and, and a skill that I learned from Paddy was to get work done. And uh, if Paddy wanted to find you, he would find you. And he, multiple people, he'll get multiple people to find you. So he would get phone calls from, uh, you know, his uh, his uh, secretary, his <laughs> uh, the, the security. Even my mom would call me saying, "Paddy is <laughs> looking for it." So that that was unbelievable, and uh, you you couldn't just uh, get away from him when you wanted something done. So uh, that brings me to uh, Manjiri Mahapur, who has been his secretary and worked very closely uh, with him for uh, many years now. And I, I would like to play to you a short message from her recorded earlier. Ayuga and Ayuga Professor Padmanabhan are inseparable for me. One of my primary roles in Ayuka was to work as his secretary. And our association began as early as 1992 when I first met him. Some of the traits of his personality have always touched me and I cannot help remembering that. As my interactions with him deepened and grew, I realized what a different person he was. He was a respectable scientist recognized for his contributions even in those years. And yet when he began dictating letters to me, he said, Look, I'm also learning to dictate letters to a secretary because I never had one in TIFR. So I will try to get everything right in one go, but if it doesn't come through, you should excuse me. Needless to say, his dictations were almost final in the first go itself and hardly had any major corrections, but I was really touched by his humility. On a given day, he used to assign me innumerable tasks and uh, he taught me to prioritize these assignments, break the work goals into small units, use the method of elimination, complete all the simple tasks first and then concentrate on the harder one and by breaking them into small units, achieve them one by one and it led to nothing but success. He imbibed in me the culture of doing a thorough and flawless job. His childlike curiosity was very exceptional and 
I experienced that he did not miss an opportunity to learn even while dealing with administrative matters. And on a given day when a situation presented itself and he, he would say, oh, what a wonderful learning it was. And it was so humbling to hear that. Appreciation and compliments also came very generously from him if the task was completed well. I understood the true meaning of passion while working with him. I experienced his passion for physics from very close quarters. He set exceptionally high standards for himself and expected it from all those who worked with him. On days when he was a bit relaxed and at the end of our di dictations, he used to be in a mood to talk and would share some of his memories of his school and college and very proudly say that, look, I went to a municipal school after all and also told me that, look, I never learned history in school, but I learned it when I joined DIFR through my peers and professors. He said what an interesting subject history was only when he learned it in TIFR and how it helped to correlate the past and the present. So this is how our association grew longer and longer and soon the boss subordinate relationship uh, did not, wasn't there. He showed interest and concern not only in me but also my family members and was very happy to get updates about them and learn about their progress and achievements. I also developed a very special connect with Vasanti and Hamsa over the years. In fact, in later years I used to share many of my family updates with Vasanti first and then with Paddy. Paddy's memories are innumerable and will always remain with me. It is hard to accept that he is no more. It's very hard for us to um, sit through this very, very moving session that we've had so far. And we are now about to wrap up. We have the last few speakers. And it's amazing that so many people have stayed with us, remembering Padmanabhan and, um, and, and, and listening to this very, very moving um, attributes that we've had. For me, it's a personal loss as far as I had known him for such a long time, but also any, as, as Manjiri and many others also said, Abhyankar said, that administrative matters, some crisis arises. The first person I would call to ask for advice, this is, and that is a great, great loss for us. Even now, he was so much involved in all of our, um, our um, Ayuka's work in many ways. Um, I will um, ask some of the long-term um, uh, international collaborators of uh, uh, Paddy, who are in, um, in with us today to say a couple of very short things. Uh, first, I'll ask uh, Ofa Lahab, um, parent professor, uh, University College London, um, to say a, 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 a couple of things. Ofa, are you there? Yes. Oh, hi. Yeah. Th thanks, Joe Mark. It's a very sad but very special occasion. And thanks very much for organizing it. And let me start by conveying my condolences to the wife and daughter of uh, Paddy and all his many friends uh, in India and around the world. Um, I, I've known uh, Paddy uh, for quite a while. In fact, I think since that sabbatical in the late 80s uh, in, in Cambridge, which Shomak mentioned at, at the start, and then through uh, his many visits uh, to Cambridge while I was still there, and then we, later we kept in touch. My last meeting with him was actually at his 60th birthday conference, which was a wonderful event organized by some of you, very memorable, and he was absolutely in his prime uh, there. And uh, there's also, you know, the, the book mentioned that was edited by Joseph Bagla and others, which I think uh, is great to, for keeping that legacy. I think many things were said, and I can really identify with almost everything was said about his intellect. 
Uh, he was certainly a deep thinker. You had to think very hard when, when talking to, to, uh, to Paddy. He was thinking outside the box, as we've heard. I had the honor of writing with him only one paper, co-authoring one paper, which was about the origin of the factor of a third in the ISW, in the, in the Sachs, sorry, in the Sachs Wolf effect. So this kind of shows you the sort of thing he was interested in among many, many other things. Uh, the books, really wonderful. And I, I'd like to agree with what people have said. They should, we should percolate them to future generations. And we only uh, end by saying that I asked him, people mentioned that he was quite humorous and witty. I asked him one day, Paddy, how do you manage to write so many books? He said, it's very, very simple. You write a page a day, and then within a year, you have a book of 300 something pages. What's well, a big deal? Everyone can do it. Well, I think we know that one has to be Paddy to write the right words in that page and to produce a wonderful book. So um, yeah, it's a special occasion. Uh, my condolences, and uh, we shall greatly miss uh, Paddy. Thank you, Shomak. Dr. Busha, your uh, sound is muted. Professor, you're muted. It's okay now. Thanks. Oh, it's gone. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, I guess so. Is it okay? Sorry. Uh, I was not prepared to talk, I must say. All right. Um, Okay, just a few um, un unorganized thoughts about Paddy. Um, first of all, we have been longtime associates uh, starting, uh, uh, I, I guess, in the 80s uh, when we co organized the first uh, Franco Indian cosmology school at Ayuka, uh, and where it gave me the opportunity of bringing a lot of French cosmologists. And uh, that's uh, there was the beginning of a long uh, interaction and, and friendship. Uh, so I guess, of course, as everyone else, I was seduced by, by the sharpness of his mind. Uh, it's, it, it, to me, it blew my mind. I mean, just it, very simply, uh, I didn't meet that many people uh, of that caliber. Of course, we can think of Jim Peebles, we can think of uh, Yakov Boris Zeldovich. I mean, he was in, in my own circle in a very select group. Uh, and uh, it was always great to talk about physics and uh, his, uh, his way of being uncompromising uh, concerning mediocrity, even though he was not uh, harsh, but uh, he had a very clear judgment, I would say. Um, so we met among the years. We had uh, several uh, joint proposals. Uh, we followed people. Uh, some of them are online. I mean, they might remember th those days. Um, he also visited IAP, uh, like which I'm now directing. Uh, it, it, was, it was also a great time. And yeah, I mean, he was also very cheerful. Uh, and uh, or, or witty, if, I don't know whether the, the, the best adjective. Uh, and as, as Offer just said, I mean, yes, it's very simple to write a book when you are petty, you just write a page a day. Well, not everyone can write that page a day, in particular, uh, if you think of some of his books, which had a very lasting influence over, over the field. Um, and uh, <clears throat> So what I, one thing I, I, I do remember, so we, we met initially talking much about uh, the nonlinear clustering regime uh, under gravity and so on. And then later on, uh, we, our, our path starting to split somewhat. I went to lead Planck and he went to do more on uh, gravity as an emerging manifestation. Um, and so we chat why we were doing this uh, and um, he said, well, I mean, we, okay, your path is, 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 is blank, that's fine. For me, I wanted to really, even though I might not succeed because it's a very hard thing to do, 
I want to try to do something of value in my life. Uh, and uh, of course, that meant in physics. And uh, well, I mean, it's hard to think of a more ambitious goal uh, than uh, taming gravity. And he has been working uh, on this uh, since then. Um, I must say, uh, our last interaction was in Bangalore, not so long ago, where we had lunch uh, with his wife and sharing, uh, well, again, um, what life has thrown at us. Uh, it, all of this, I'm sorry, I'm, 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 a, I'm not very uh, organized in my thoughts. I, I'm a little bit shaken. Uh, I've lost a friend. I mean, that, that's just, that's it. I mean, and uh, uh, I was always um, uh, rejoicing myself going to India with the idea of meeting with Paddy again. Uh, that was always, uh, you know, uh, yeah, one of the uh, highlights of, of any of my trips. And um, well, I can only say we've we've missed we've all missed a great colleague, uh, and uh, I missed uh, one of the persons I was uh, very comfortable to talk about things a bit uh, about our hopes and uh, and and to do something of value in physics. All right, and uh, I want to stop there. Thank you very much, Francois. I mean, you summed it up so well by saying that you know everybody in this. Uh, meeting today has lost a friend, and and uh, and he meant very much, very different things to all of us, but also the same thing to all of us. And that's, you know, his standards were always the highest, absolutely the highest. Hard to find somebody who had such uncompromising standards, and and that we all wanted to be up there when we interacted with him. Thank you so much for it. Uh, finally, I would like to ask if Alain Omo is there. I saw him there. Is Alain um, there? And would, he like, would you like to say something? Yes, Alain, please go ahead. So, uh, I was not prepared to talk at all. Uh, so nevertheless, uh, I want to say my soul to have seen uh, Paddy disappear. Uh, I share your thoroughness to all of you and uh, to Ayuka and to all his friends, etc. It was certainly one of the greatest uh, physicists I've known. And I could share, for instance, what uh, Francois Boucher said much before, much better than I could do. Uh, he knew much better, Paddy, that uh, I couldn't, I could do myself. Uh, I met Paddy only occasionally, very often during my visits to Ayuka. It was every time a real great pleasure uh, to find again this friend and to discuss with him of uh, a bit of physics, but uh, should confess that uh, many of the topics he was discussing was too difficult for me. So I take the opportunity to share Soronas with Paddy's wife and daughter and uh, to say my pleasure to participate in this ceremony for him. So thank you. Thank you very much, Alan. And that, that's a, a good note to uh, bring this to a close. Uh, finally, I would like to um, ask uh, um, Hamza, Paddy's daughter, who's here with us, to uh, say a few words at the end, um, which is the hardest job for her. I'm sorry. So, um, okay, so can everyone hear me? Yes. Great. Um, I just want to thank everybody for coming and for sharing all these, um, these great memories. Um, I learned a lot, actually, even, uh, and of course, I knew that it's, it's definitely not just me. He has influenced like so many people. It's an uh, amazing amount of people and amazing legacy. So I just got to see glimpses of that um, now and also from conversations with people over the last um, week and so on. Um, so just not to thank everyone here in this room. I also want to thank everyone who has been so incredible over email. Oof, my inbox has been flooded and I have just been so overwhelmed with, uh, with what I have been reading and receiving. And it just goes to show how, I mean, how 
how breathtaking um, this influence was. So I really want to say uh, one of the things which um, really made an impression was one of the messages which I received and which is how I will see this. And let's say that that person said, I don't exactly recall who it was, but they said, it's a celebration of an amazing life. And that's what it's always going to be. So I would really like to end on that note and thank everyone once again. Thank you, Hansa. Thank you very much for being so eloquent. And, and this is how we started today by saying, let today, tonight's, this evening's uh, um, event be a celebration of Paddy's life. And it's, uh, it's, of course, our connections with Paddy in so many ways and the celebration of these connections. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending. There were 200 people there, and I'm amazed that almost four hours after we started, we are uh, still have 87 people with us. Thank you very much. Good evening, good morning, everywhere. And uh, we uh, bid adieu right now. And let us remember Paddy this way, the way we discussed today. Thank you very much. <laughs>